I just need to talk to you guys, right? The camera is all yeah. fine. Hello, hello! Olá, olá, mitológicos e mitológicas do Brasil do mundo. Sejam bem-vindos a mais uma edição do MD3, o meu, seu, nosso podcast de esporte eletrônico. Nesta noite de segunda-feira, o nosso antigo dia está retornando e a gente, excepcionalmente, está ao vivo nessa segunda para receber ele, o cara que o Brasil inteiro está amando e pediu para vir aqui. Sou Coach Seal. Welcome and be at your home. Thank you, thank you. Appreciate it. Excited. E também, boa noite, senhor Thiago Maia. Uma boa noite a todos, uma boa noite também, no um, um caso, um good night to Coach Seal. E ele fez acontecer uma coisa que a gente nunca, nunca rolou, né? De fazer um podcast onde teremos que ter o nosso inglês FISC. É. Sem patrocínio, no caso, falando, mas sem patrocínio. Poderíamos Fisk, fazer, se quiser, por favor. Né? Teremos que fazer, fazer o nosso meia-culpa aqui e tentar o nosso melhor. Eu vou ser sincero, que eu acho que a gente vai dar conta. É, eu tô, já estou já, já falando. Espero. Mas para o pessoal de casa só entender, a gente vai... E perguntando, traduzindo, perguntando, Isso. traduzindo, para ser uma coisa que fica legal a gente não perder o nosso tato, que é uhum. as nossas perguntas e o que o Silvio colocar, e vocês estarem interagindo. Então é um programa onde a participação de vocês também é muito importante. Mas, appreciate him coming here. It was the, the, the number one target for this year, right? Yeah, yeah. Since the, the time you announced you you interesting to come to Brazil, I say we need to Bring Coach Seal to BMD3. E aí fazendo, com certeza é. era a pessoa que a gente queria ter aqui desde o início do ano, mas a gente sabe que a Kate estava começando é. o, o split e precisava do homem. Então. I will send some messages here for the audience, then Todo we'll start, é, ok? Próprio. Galera, então deixa o seu like, se inscreve, aí é muito importante, chama todo mundo pra assistir, a gente tá começando, ó, em ponto, tá? Praticamente, pra gente aqui, 10 minutinhos, é, muito, é quase em ponto. Então, já deixa o seu like, se inscreve, é muito importante e também... Ajude a gente aqui um pouquinho mais, se você puder. Se você quiser, então participe com a gente. Mande seu superchat, mande quanto você quiser. A gente vai ler em inglês aqui para o Sil, vai fazer a tradução. E em alguns momentos a gente vai separar então para esses superchats. Pode fazer as suas perguntas por aí, a gente vai recebendo aqui da produção. E além disso, se você quiser também ajudar um pouquinho mais, você pode virar membro aqui do canal do Flow Games MD3. É baratinho, R$7,90, se eu não me engano, por mês. E com isso você tem acesso ao nosso grupo de WhatsApp, de Telegram. Você tem acesso ao Discord, conteúdos antecipados, conteúdos exclusivos. Então dá uma olhadinha por lá em tudo que você pode receber e apoia aqui mais um pouquinho esse projeto, tá? Então... Chama essa galera, cola com todo mundo aí, avisa que começou o programa, já postei nas redes sociais, mas se você avisar também, já dá aquela ajudada monstra, beleza? Então é isso, recados dados. So, thank you again to come to our podcast here, Sil. And the first question, I, I can't ask anything or better than this question. Why are you interested in coming to Brazil? Because you have a lot of titles, you won't lack, you won't in all the regions you you game you play in such a way but here brazil a little region in terms of game you play why you interested in come to brazil and come to cbilong ah, só explicando oh. pra galera. Eu perguntei pra ele por que ele ficou interessado em vir pro CBLOL. É isso que eu ia falar. Quanto que ele tinha perguntar? Pô, depois ele de, de ter ganho em tantos lugares diferentes. Yeah, um, I think, I think first of all, uh, people really overstate my my value a little bit here i think that um I've, i've been in fortunate situations i've had good teams i've had good mentors around me uh but i do only have one title and it's not as head coach either uh and although i do think that we were competing at quite a high level it's not to the state where i would say oh i mean it's just too good for this region it's not really like that at all um so yeah it, I think in terms of career accomplishments, I'm really at the very beginning of my journey. I, I did only start in 2020. Pretty sure Jocko was already like 15 years into coaching in 2020. <laughs> Sadly. <laughs> <laughs> what, 10 years of coaching? More than 10 years. Yeah, more than 10. Yeah. If you, there is some part that is as a player, but yeah. yeah. And I was also not a player. So I was really a baby. I didn't know much about the game. Um, you know, maybe one day if you have Croc here, He'll tell you what kind of uh, terrorist I was inside the, uh, in, in terms of the game knowledge. I will uh, ask him in the next yeah. weekend. I, I didn't know much. I, I really learned um, with almost no knowledge in, in 2020. Uh, it was all just putting 200% to learn. Now, Brazil. Uh, I wasn't initially interested. I wasn't actually initially interested in Brazil at all. I didn't even put it in my list of regions that I want to go to. 
at the first tweet that yeah. you did show that like yeah when people started to gather your attention yeah uh and to be honest the fans were nice but they had not as much as people think to do with my decision to come because uh for, for me media is a battleground media is business um and of course i appreciate them very much but it it mostly comes down to what does the future of brazil look like that was the the primary decision maker that being said peter is so passionate about brazil yeah. he would always tell me in here he's our number one salesman yeah and he'd always say hey man like when i was working with tokas he was so smart and revolta he would like he would hype people up and he's such a leader that people would die for him he, you know he'd sell it like this you know uh-huh. and he'd say you have to watch cblo it's like the most exciting region people stand up and like yell at the other guy and tell them they're your like they're their like parents or something like that <laughs> yeah you know it's really like this and i, I was like oh. peter i have 24 hours in the day i need to watch lck i need to watch lpl i need to watch the european leagues etc etc um but then you know i thought about i mean i kind of reflected on myself and i was like hmm, i mean am i being am i missing something here because quite often Uh, from life experience when i was put in these situations i would make a hasty decision and miss opportunities i think that was what led me to think about brazil uh so i did a a full analysis of like brazil uh its market its economy um even its political structure which we won't talk about at all right today okay But, please <laughs> um yeah like stability uh you know currency everything that i could possibly think of media growth and one thing that stood out to me is one I do think that Brazil is going to prosper in the next 10 10 15 years. In your sports in general, I think that Brazil will prosper in the next 10 15 years as long as there's nothing uh you know very vita that <laughs> we cannot discuss here. Uh, and second, um I think the cost of operation in Brazil in terms of business is very low. Yeah, this is yeah. one of the differentials. And and it's it's a sad reality. There is a very big income discrepancy problem here, but it's also a very big strength in terms of it, Brazil's ability to to operate esports because uh the cost of operation the burn rate we call it in in finance is so low here that if a foreign investor invested 3 4 million US dollars it is a tremendous amount of money here 20 million reais yeah um whereas if you did that in in LA in It's America nothing. it'd be three months of operations You pay the foods of the the the, the facility yeah. for three months. I mean, and, you pay water and it's fifty eyes. You know, it's like a bottle of water is like fifty eyes. So, um, I was like, okay, well, this is a good step. Let's look into it more. Right, the cost of operation in Brazil is low. One of the big problems with esports is burn rate, burning investors' money. But uh, calma, agora a gente tem que dar uma traduzida, que senão. It's okay. Tem que ser. Então, resumindo o que ele estava colocando, a gente perguntou o porquê que, né, que ele queria vir ao Brasil. Ele está dando várias razões que inicialmente o interesse dele não era tão grande no Brasil, principalmente no começo. Mas o Peter ele foi um cara que trouxe. Na verdade, ele falou primeiro também que ele teve um título expressivo e não foi Sim. na posição de head coach. Isso. Mas que o Peter ele foi um dos caras que influenciou a que ele assistisse, mesmo ele tendo muitas outras regiões para assistir. Ele começou a dar atenção para o Brasil, que é algo importante para não tomar uma decisão que pode passar uma ideia, na, uma ideia boa na carreira, uma oportunidade boa. E ele está comentando o quanto que o custo de você investir no Brasil é menor comparado com as outras regiões. E que ele acredita que o Brasil é uma região que vai prosperar muito, muito nos próximos, próximos 10, anos. 15 anos, não só no esporte como um todo. Então é nesse ponto que a gente está. Então, so, you say a, a cost of operation in Brazil is low, but we we are sponsors here paying in real don't pay in dollars so you know we don't have this opportunity to receive in dollar and transform in real yeah so that that that's the point um esports is an unsolved equation when you look at traditional sports like football uh the the primary revenue generator for these companies is not just sponsorships it's actually ticket sales for stadiums ah okay see but in in esports you don't have that at all in yeah. esports your primary revenue generator is sponsorship and the 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 big dog is uh the the game developer they're the ones that make the majority of the money so was in franchise today in cblo all the 10 teams have a revenue share of the audience and the sponsors that we, they are with cblo and they, they receive other kinds of payment i would really 
strongly doubt that that amount is anything worth considering in terms of average uh, operations. Yeah. Uh, I think that basically what I'm trying to say is esports is is a time game. It's an unsolved equation. When you look at traditional sports, there's a method of making money. There is a clear formula that works, a formula that doesn't work. You create exciting teams, popular teams, and you sell stadium seats. In esports, you don't have that. Whether or not you get a revenue share, you know, how many people watch right, right now at Riot? 200? You know, I heard they, you know, I heard maybe it gets bigger. You know, I didn't really hear details, but I heard maybe it gets bigger. But maximum, let's just say they have four, five hundred people. Traditional sports stadium holds 10,000, 20,000. So the amount of revenue that you gain when you operate an esports company is so fractionally small compared to, to sports companies. Nice. So it's true. So basically what I'm trying to say is like, one big obstacle is a, is, a, is a matter of time. If there is a level of risk associated with, let's just say, um, economic downturns, like a recession, maybe I'm using two big words here, but um, essentially teams right now need to survive. Teams and the ecosystem need to survive. Mm -hmm. The teams that use too much money will not survive. Yeah. If you're paying 5 million highs, $1 million salary for one player, that region that, is not going to survive. That's surreal here in Brazil. So um, that's a big advantage in terms of financial operations. If a foreign investor invests 10, 20 million, they can survive the next five years, no problem. No problem whatsoever. Um, and so that's a huge, huge, huge advantage. And I think that that was one of my first um, reasonings in coming here. The first time you hear about Sebilo is Peter or is when Beatles and all the, all the communities speak about you in the Twitter, in your social medias? I was always aware of, of CBLO. It's just I, I didn't watch it. I mean, I think any, anyone in esports knows about Brazil, especially the fanaticism. Um, and that was my second point, actually. I think that the second point was fans. I think that any kind of business or operation, especially in the entertainment industry, is driven by fanaticism and is driven by interest. Yeah. Right? Something that Brazil does phenomenally. Uh, how, can I swear here? I can't swear. Yeah, so yeah. You can swear a lot fucking here. Fucking amazing. <laughs> right? This is something that Brazil does. Fucking amazing. Is they focus on Brazilians. Why? Well, if you look at Uber Eats, Uber Eats failed so fast. iFood took over, right? Brazil is the only country in the world where the primary streaming platform is not Netflix and Disney+. Plus. That's bizarre, right? So what CBLOL did incredibly is they focused on the domestic fans. Yes. Yeah. And that is amazing. That is exactly what you need. Well, in my head, in order to run a sustainable esports business. Sorry, Joko, you were going to say something. No, this is something organic about Brazil. Yeah. Because at first, I think that they didn't target speci specifically that. Mm. But something with the creators, something with the, the personalities that we have here, Kind of garnered that. I don't know where where the lever was turned, Chepi. I think it just in since the beginning, the CBLO was based in your players, in your community. Uh, we, here in Brazil, took a time to people cheers for a team. In the beginning, they cheers for a player. So they cheer for BRTT, they cheer for Kami, they cheer for Takeshi. And this first team, I remember that can turn this the situation was pain in loud yeah in the in, in the other times we don't see a fan who like a team who like some kind of label no they like the player so in the beginning of the construction of CBLO, we already begin with this kind of i, I like our domestic league i like our mm. events I love this here. Yeah. I, I don't care about the, the words. I don't care about MSI. I care about CBLO. Do you, do you need time to translate this? No, so let's just talk to the public for something because uh, while we were talking, I ran a, a pool with the viewers if they wanted us to just freely speak or to translate as we go. Like we had like three for, three for one that just want us mm. to speak. You can, you can look at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh, I'm going to speak with Portuguese then. So, guys, assim, a gente faz o que vocês, a audiência, <coughs> majoritariamente vão gostar. Não tem como atender todo mundo. Sim, sim, então, sim. Então, o que, que eu proponho, chefe? Eu não sei eu, se você curte. A gente vai no inglês, vai, e vai, a gente vai. Legenda. E aí a gente legenda. Porque 
a gente fez uma pool agora, quem tá ao vivo, e foi de praticamente é, 3 pra 1, querendo que a gente só vá no flow pra não perder o flow da conversa. Foi a última vez que eu vou interromper se o Chep Tá bom, então beleza. Colocar. Né? A gente vai em inglês. Vocês assim, podem ter certeza que a gente vai traduzir isso. depois. Pra vocês acontecer. que estão assistindo e não entendem inglês, eu peço que fiquem. Pelo menos pra vocês apoiarem um pouco mais o ao vivo do episódio. Mas depois a gente vai soltar isso aqui legendado. Tranquilo? Mas não é tipo excluindo ninguém. É porque assim... Por ser uma conversa, a gente, eu também percebi, não sei se você percebeu, uhum. mas a gente tá... É melhor ter um flow de conversa. Uhum. Então a gente tá aqui aprendendo com vocês. Então a partir de agora a gente não vai interromper mais pra traduzir, tá. a gente vai só conversar. Mas por tá? favor, você que não entende, fica aqui pra apoiar, e vai ter tá depois. bom? We're just talking that... Ah, you understand. Yeah, legend, you, you will do subtitles later. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's because the conversation. we run the pool yeah, and the people at, like... Yeah. I, I don't understand. understand. I understand. The flow of the I, understand. Conversation. Sorry. I understand. Entendi. Go ahead. Okay. I don't remember what I was talking about. Talking about the, the way that the... The, ecos the ecosystem like yeah, the happened. Ecosystem. Uh... No, yeah, yeah. No, it's because of that. In the beginning, we are already born with this kind of passion to yeah. your. And there's own the football part too. Like yeah, yeah, yeah that's true. We have uh, and <laughs> the funniest part is that this is something that maybe you can't like grasp, but when we were kids, the Brazilian that you, that part I know that you know, but. The Brazilian football scene, especially when you mm. talk about the national team, when we were kids, they were like dreaming. They were yeah. the best, and like Brazilians would mm. paint the streets with the colors of the of the flag, and they would stay up to watch all games. Nowadays, things are looking a bit grim, but we grew with that passion. Yeah. But since the Brazilian team is not going that well, we have a lot of 20, 30 year like Brazilians that have this passion ingrained on them because what, of what happened when we grew up, why we grew up. And many of them revert that to League of Legends because this is like a way to, to, to cheer, a way to support a team and to use the passion. So we grew with passion. Yeah, yeah. I think it's in, it's in the Brazilian DNA. So yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. So second point, yeah. You you say you won't you don't watch CBLO. You were just listening about us some time ago. Yeah. When you watch CBLO for the first time, what do you think about your league? <laughs> yeah, truly, I want the truth here. I mean, it was. Uh, you remember the year? Yeah, like when I actually watched uh, CB, CB Law for the first time. Like for the first time. Pro, pro, which was I mean, the first game that you watched? I remember. I mean, I, I, did, I did watch it like a long time ago. I remember... Um, EDG? Filter, uh, no, it was... Uh, uh, yeah, I think so, actually. EDG 2050. Probably but the I, first I game. I filtered out... I mean, back then I wasn't even playing League seriously. And I would watch casually. So I think I do remember watching that game. But I did seriously watch my first CB Law game um, when I was in Oceania. That being said, I filtered it out because I thought the level was very, very low. Um, and when when I came back to watch it in 2023, before I came here, mm -hmm. it was, I mean, like I always say, Brazil is is a land of like unicorns of magic. Yes, like just incredible scenes happen that shouldn't happen, and it includes League of Legends. You know, like things that just should never happen happen all the time. Um, What happened this this weekend is like it's it's, crazy. it's bizarre. Not about Civil Law, but out. about the Rebo. You out. probably heard about the Rebo Six thing. I didn't hear about that one. Yeah. Shep, couldn't attend because he was on Civil Law, but mm -hmm. we as uh, a podcast, we were... We were invited by Rainbow Six and Ubisoft to stay, oh, yeah. to, to make it a, a... I don't know how to say it, it's a cover. Uh, it's a, it's a, a second scream. Like, it, we, yeah, yeah. we're part of the show. Yeah. For and the, the Rainbow days. Six have the World Championship here in Brazil. Mm -hmm. It's like Worlds, but this time we have here. two team, Brazilian teams in the finals. A FaZe Clan and W7M. W7M. And they, they, they have two brothers. Twin brothers. Twin brothers, one in each team. And this W7M has the last dance because they will change the organization for the next year. No, to, to this year. It was a best of five, tied to two, went to overtime. And one of the brothers win against the other. So at the Ibira Poeira, I don't know if you ever we went there. Yeah, like, but that is Yeah, we are, crazy. Two, we are Korea on, on Rainbow Six. <gasps> I do, and I do know we're, that. We're I actually mm, the I'm, major I'm, region. I'm good friends with the Rainbow Six people in Korea. So Fear X, uh, before ah, they yeah, used to be yeah. called Mantis FPS, before it was like Cloud9. 
uh, yeah. with uh, Envy Taylor and and these people. So, so this was magic. Like, yeah, so, uh, that is magic. Incredible. Magic stuff happens yeah, here all with... the time. It's, it reminds me of um, you know, in tennis back in the day. I remember watching as a kid. It was Selena, go, Selena, yeah, Selena Williams versus uh, Venus Williams. Venus, yeah, Venus yeah, Williams, yeah. that one. Yeah, you know, that, it's the it's same that kind vibe. of magic. It's the same vibe. Yeah, 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 that's incredible. Um, but yeah, this only happens in Brazil. So that, I guess that was like one of the big factors, the second big factor um, in, t- in terms of coming here. Uh, and there, there was one other reason that I came here. I think that um, all my career, and my career is very complex uh, in terms of how, how it went, but it was always my goal and ambition to be, stay in one team and build something. Now, unfortunately, uh, well, you could say fortunately as well, just the way that my career progressed, that wasn't possible for me or it didn't make sense for me to stay with one particular team, right? Uh, and for me to build something from ground up, for me, I have a specific criteria when it comes to what I think is necessary in order to build a long-term project, right? Well, several criteria and it just so happened that other than and i did officially get an lcs offer i got i I chose brazil over lcs which is if you told me that two years ago i would say i am crazy but it happened um definitely had lc options as well uh, erl options it was the only region where i could go and have complete control where i felt like the region had so much potential because when people say brazilians don't have talent they are out of their minds, the amount of talent in this region is phenomenal, phenomenal. But the structure and the the approach that teams take globally, not just in Brazil, is lacking. And for a country like Brazil, specific to its nature, so in terms of its economic issues, in terms of its e- ecosystem and structure, Brazil is a is a is a region that I think needs good structure and coaching more than any other region. Yeah. Right. So I felt like I could have the biggest impact. Um, and that was the final decider here, actually. Uh, I, I mean, Jocko, why, why do you coach? Why do you coach? At the moment it's yeah. for passion. Yeah. Mostly. And there's something that, I mean, in the beginning, I loved the scene and yeah. being on the scene because I already have my, other plans for life yeah. as a doctor. But as I stayed coaching, I learned the joy of having people prosper yeah, and watching the evolution, the, the growth of the players. So many of the players that are now at CBLO, at some point they worked Wait. with me and I helped on something or I can remember helping on something. So the passion to help players get better and win as a consequence of that. So this is like the basis for what I do nowadays. And I really like it. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of crazy because <laughs> sometimes things get totally out of control, like on, on my schedule, because I'm here, I am doing other things on Twitch, other things on YouTube, because coaching in Brazil at the moment, not for you, I mean, you are a, a guy from outside and now the way the market works, they give a lot of like praise to people that come from mm-hmm. outside. But Brazilian coaches at the moment, they normally have like low earnings. And if you don't do it because you love it, probably the yeah. stress that you go during each week is like not sustainable. Yeah. You Absolutely. really have to love it. That's what I thought too. Um, and on that point, you know, in a way I, I'm the same, right? Uh, the, the reason I coach is actually a little bit different. It's not so much passion for esports at all. My passion isn't in esports. My passion is in making a difference. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And that was always my, and on a side note before I continue, I think Brazil is the only country that I've seen, and it's so bizarre to say this, where extremely overqualified people are taking extremely underpaid jobs. For example, my manager, Nono. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this, this guy's guy, amazing. This guy worked out loud as well. You know, he, he is an engineer. He is a, he's like, he knows he's like a, he works with physics, with metallurgy or something, you know, this guy's genius. No, no, it's the best we have here. No, and, no. and he's I like, 
And the players are like, no, no, can I grab a coffee? And he's like, yeah, this is the job he's doing, you know. That is yeah. bizarre. You know, and Joko, you're a doctor. <laughs> I would be making roughly <laughs> way more. I would be making 20 times what I do. 20 times. Yes. Yes. Yeah. See, this is uh, at least 20 times. Bizarre. Bizarre. I'm a lawyer. I drop it, my, it's yeah. my, play, it's my players ask for Sig, coffee too. They ask me uh, for coffee. Sig is a lawyer. Drop my Go get your coffee. Sig is a lawyer too. Yeah. My boss is a lawyer as well. And he dropped it for this. I mean, it is just bizarre. Anyway, back on topic. <laughs> I can't believe this. Uh, this yeah, is, this is, you know what I mean? Don't make me think about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> too much. Don't make me think about this that. Is, this, is, this is Brazil. You know, um, it's, it's backwards, but it's, it's in a brilliant country. And I want to talk about, about that a bit later. But... Um, Anyway, for me, what drives me as a person has always been, and, and it is a little bit to do with how I grew up and my background and whatnot, is I want to make a world a better place before I left it. And the way that I talk, told myself as a kid was, if you're going to do that, you might as well do it in the biggest way possible. So for me, esports is actually just an avenue and a step towards that direction. I'm still 27, going towards 30, kind of old. Shouldn't say that in front of you two. Yeah. No, you, we are. I'm we yeah. are. <laughs> I'm really yeah. older than you. You know, this is not something that I'm looking to do for the next 10, uh, 20 years, actually. And I it's to, not. I told myself that too when no, I was 36. But it's really like this. <laughs> it's really like this. So, you know, for example, I have a startup that I'm operating right now. Um, and it was just a step in the right direction. But while I do do coaching, my passion is to make a difference in the people that I work with every single day. Yes. And in Brazil, I'm able to do that. In Brazil, I'm able to do that in the best possible way, right? And what helps is if you align with management in your vision, and I think management really appreciates my, my business mind, uh, even though I am very young in that area, um, then it's much, much easier because I, I really do believe in a top-down top down system. If your core, if your root is rotten, right, with anything, once again, this is a very sensitive topic, so I'll keep it to esports. No, it, For example, it, it, it makes sense. CEO of a company is, is piss poor. Yeah. You know? Yeah. There's a particular team that I'm thinking of right now. Um, yes, I know. You I know, know then, then <laughs> you know, it, it's never going to be great. And, and I just talked to these guys and I was like, okay, these guys know my feeling and let's go to Brazil. Fuck it. And the cost was a lot. Yeah, there's two things oh, about that. The first one is that you actually landed probably on the best team possible mm -hmm. because everything conspired in the right direction, in my opinion. Yeah. Because Kid wanted to go back to the former glory and they needed someone to help them rebuild. Mm -hmm. They had okay one year when they came back. It was like yeah. they tried something, but clearly they didn't have the direction that you are steering them now. And you talked about the management. Kids management probably is the best for the way you think. Yeah. Because I have worked with them before on multiple occasions. Like it was on Kid like um, many years ago. We actually won Rift Rivals, were second place, sadly, on Civil Law. And I know that the people there, they have that mind. They have that uh, open mind for business. Mm. And the second part is something that I think that is a subject of its own. We can talk later too. But what you did about your life before coming here is the thing that won me over. Ah, uh, yeah, I did. Really because this. if you didn't do that, everyone on the scenario, I don't know if uh, other people saw it as I saw it, but we had a lot of coaches that come from other regions that did stuff on social media but actually came here and Farm. didn't perform. We have a lot of We have kinds. a lot of those cases. Yeah, like we had a lot 10 of years kinds. ago we had. Did they tell about the Mirage guy? That was unbelievable. That's uh, like, you know that, unbelievable. You know that history? M Mirid? M miracle. 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 No, yes. it's Mirage. It's Mirage. That's Mirage. Mirage. Yeah, Mirage. Yeah, I, have, I have rough. This that. one is unbelievable. Like yeah. the guy tricked like Red Cannons like three times in a row. He tricked them that he was a player and then he came to Brazil. They actually didn't look up. Oh, he's Korean a gold player. in solo queue. Yeah, he was gold in solo queue. And they actually had him on the rooster. And then he acted as a coach. And then they said, okay, but they quickly realized he was not a good coach. He and has a translator. And then a translator. And we even had, that. I heard this. I heard the legend of Coach Kim. As well. Yeah, Coach yeah, Kim. We have many examples, Kim. you know. Yeah. So when you showed up, I was like, hmm, maybe another one of those guys. Yeah. And when I saw what you did about your life, because obviously social media, like you said, is a battlefield. And 
I saw pictures with you, like you were in a good place with your girlfriend trying, having problems with the, the apartment. Oh, you're going to go through that again, the apartment stuff. I remember that. And then suddenly you gave everything up and came and went to Brazil. So the part that you gave everything up, I said, okay, this guy mean business. Yeah. I mean, I, I did watch that podcast with, with legend. So with yeah. subtitles. Um, and that's something that I think we need to elaborate a little further on because I don't actually talk too much about my personal life on, on social media. I think what I've shown is like really surface level. For example, I've heard of the famous Jocko girlfriend. That's not <laughs> actually true. <laughs> that is really That's true. not actually true. This is true. If you want to you go that avenue, love. I can go. You hate no, no, love. No. The thing is, I have many experiences and some are shocking mm -hmm. about relationships. Yeah. But like actually on the academy team, I have... Two players that are actually dating, and yeah. it's okay. They yeah. know how to date. Yeah, okay. <laughs> they know how to date. Yeah. <laughs> they know how, it's, it's when they don't know, right? Yes, when yeah. they don't know. Like, I'm not, never, I, I'll never come to a player and say, stop dating. I'll yeah. never do that. Yeah. But if they're not, like, folks that are not doing their part, I'm going to say, I need you more here. Yeah. It's because players are too young. So, yeah. in very much of these cases we they we don't have some kind of experience in being a star and be in a relationship and have responsibilities these all the three things are very new for a lot of our players i but mean you don't know, you don't need to go far to be like there's some organization i don't know the name i, I think i don't know i don't know the name maybe i can remember right. that actually had to expel a player because they brought a girlfriend to the training facilities. I don't know. I don't remember the name of the organization. I think it happened last year. But maybe that is gossip too. But I mean... I mean, what I will say is I don't disagree with that. I don't disagree with that. I actually think that... That's Minerva. Not... That's Minerva's fault. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, not, it's not actually just the, the, the player fault as well. Because generally yeah. these players are very young. So the girls they're dating are also very young. Yeah. And which means they need a lot of attention and they all generally, I mean, especially the ones on Twitter. Um, so it becomes difficult. But the, the point I was trying to make was not, not the fact that you're against dating. I'm not all. against dating. Yeah. And I think dating can be powerful. I mean, you're, you're a doctor, so you know that having a meaningful relationship, yeah. having someone that supports it's your important. career is incredibly important. That's actually yeah. the, the marriage bonus. Yeah. Like if you're married, that's a big bonus. Depends from on the marriage too, but I mean, yes, but yeah, normally the, 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 we call the marriage, the marriage, the marriage, yeah, the marriage buff. It's yeah. so amazing. But, but for me, it's it's more a, more a matter of like how I've lived my life. Um, you know, something that you mentioned that I could see you perceiving that way was my family or my father recently went through some financial trouble. I saw I that too. Some, yeah, and I got. I some, didn't touch on that because I don't know if yeah. it was sensitive topics. It's but okay. I, I mean, I can talk about if it. If you mean, if if you did post it on Twitter, I followed you very closely because hmm. when I saw that you were like giving giving yeah. up giving everything to come here, and I said, okay, this is the guy to watch for. Yeah, I mean, um, basically, what I want to say is, okay, first of all, let's clear that up. My relationship wasn't particularly that great for my career in general, so uh, he's actually right here on this. Like, um, we had very different views on life. Yeah, and um. I'll, chronic workaholic so it wasn't great uh like most coaches like that most do coaches their, and their players jobs. too i think good players um so the, the reason we split was not because of brazil i think a, a big one was for example um uh, just big views that differed i want to make that very clear like i didn't break up to come to brazil i don't want to be known as that guy that broke up to come <laughs> no to i didn't mean like yeah. that but yeah no, but like people can think this way not from mm, you yeah, yeah it's general. important to clarify to, you know people in general might think oh my god this guy's a god I'm not like this, guys. For me, if I love someone, I protect my people. Same for my friends and family. Uh, I'm not going to leave them for, for a job. Mm -hmm. uh, th it's always them first. Uh, we, we separated because of big issues like I want children. I think one of my passions and one of the things I really want to do in my life is raise a family because I want to give them what I didn't have <laughs> when I grew up. And she didn't want children, right? Okay. Um, my approach and uh, thought process on my career, what I want to do in my 20s and 30s is work so that I don't have to work until I'm 60, 70 years old. That she didn't agree with too. So these, this is the reason we split, to be completely honest with you. And I, I respect her and we still talk every second day. Um, and, and the family thing too, you know, uh, I, I helped him and it was everything I had and more. It was a lot of money. Uh, 
a lot of money for anyone, I think. But that, that is also not the reason I need to succeed because people on the outside think he left his girlfriend for Brazil. He uh, needs to succeed because his family, uh, he, he, his family needs the money and if he doesn't succeed here, he's out. That's not the case. The reason I need to succeed is because I have a very strong value set and ethics towards my mission and what I'm doing here in general as a coach. I, I, I owe it to the players. And I mean, I can say it right, on, right now on the podcast, you won't have any women trouble from me when I'm in Brazil, however long I am, you know, I'm not going to be dating any, any woman. Um, if it impacts my career in any shape or form. And it, mm -hmm. I'm also not going to do anything silly. Like, you know, I heard some stuff about sex tourism here and it's like, that's really not for me, you know? Yeah. Um, Sadly. It's really, it's really not for me. I'll make that very clear in front of however many people are watching right now. Uh, it is really all about my mission. And I do have this mindset where I, I, if you didn't know, and I don't share this much, sometimes on stream, I left home at 17. So I was homeless at 17 years old. Um, I was homeless at 17 years old. I worked every job you can think of. You know, I've been a toilet cleaner. I've, I've worked in restaurants and bars. I've worked as a removalist, anything that you can think of. Um, and I did that while going to university. Uh, I got myself out of that situation. My sister and I rented a, you know, five square meter bedroom. We had no furniture and we slept on the floor uh, of the, of the room. And then we worked our way up. Now she's married and she's successful and she's a lawyer, but every day for me is, is a battlefield. So it has absolutely nothing to do with relationships. It has to do with my mindset that if I'm going to do anything, I'm going to make a difference. If I'm going to do anything, I'm going to be the best, whatever I do, basketball, tennis, whatever I do. And if I'm going to do my job, I'm going to make sure that I'm going to do it in a meaningful way. And I'm coming all the way to Brazil in a foreign country. And I've been given an opportunity to lead a gigantic team and an incredible project. So if I don't give it 110%, then I'm pathetic. And how so you no, went as a here. League of Legends coach? You have uh, this story, you leave house with 17, you work in uh, several yeah. kinds of jobs. How you went as a League of Legends coach? Yeah, my, my, my life is really bizarre. I didn't even play League. I was actually bronze five, zero LP in 2013. And by then you were, I think you were a pro player. Yeah, yeah. When I was, I played League of Legends because in high school, my friends played it. Okay. I was terrible, uh, and uh, I, start, I started actually studying law in university, law uh, justice double degree, and justice is a degree for policemen, if you didn't know. Oh, okay. Uh, I applied for uh, military service in America, as, uh, not, not America, in Australia as well. I tried to get into officer corps, hmm? failed the psychology test. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean... It's a long story. Like when I, when I left home, I think I experienced a lot of different things. Um, but generally speaking, I was just getting as much life experience as I can. And my idea was when I'm older, I don't want to live the life that I lived until now. And I want to make sure that I make a positive impact on the world. That was what drove me. Uh, I was even in a political party actually for four years, but we weren't talking. Yeah. I was in a political party. I did campaigning, went on the street, did many, many different types of things. Um, was a part of model United Nations. And then what happened was I swapped my degree from justice law to economics finance, studied for four years. And three years into my degree, I did an internship for a company called sprinklebit.com. Um, and it was a very casual internship, nothing really uh, hardcore, where I learned marketing and finance. And there I talked to people that were incredible. Harvard graduates, UCSD graduates, just geniuses that are building companies. And I'm sitting there with my shoddy degree from Australia, from a university that wasn't particularly great. Didn't have the best circumstances to study when I was growing up either. So I didn't do the best in high school too, right? So I told myself, holy shit, uh, I, if I go to life now, if I go out and graduate and just get a job, I'm going to just work a nine to five for the rest of my life and I'm going to be fucking useless. That's what I thought. So I looked at some things that I could do after my internship to uh, have an edge. And out of the many industries that I looked at, like gold and, and crypto and, and my first paycheck was also in Bitcoin. We can talk about that later. I stole Bitcoin at $800 because I, I thought I was a genius, by the way. I got my paycheck in Bitcoin uh -huh. and it went up 20% and I was like, I'm a genius. I sold it. 
And then like two years later, it was like, oh, you can't anyway, reach right anyway. now. <laughs> you, were, you were smart. Anyway, <laughs> not I, I, I'm not very smart. I'm not very smart. <laughs> and Sally was smart, but yeah. not. Yeah. Yeah. So time is a smart move. Caralho. That's what we say. <laughs> Caralho. Yeah. Caralho. <laughs> totally. Anyway, so I looked and it was esports. That's what, that's what I came down to. You know, I was just a student. Um, that, that was what? Which year was that? 2018. Okay. Okay. 18. Yes, um, that because of what of Yeah. How Oceania was at the time. But I didn't actually uh, coach in 2018. Ah, okay. You just uh, like perceived that I perceived it was that a esports was an industry and at the time it was very exciting. 100% yeah. growing year by year. It was just when like things were really hyping up with esports, you know? So I was like, okay, let's get in this industry. Maybe I'll be an esports expert in investment banking. You know, maybe okay. I'll be a okay. consultant. Maybe I'll be a... Uh, a um, like make part of it in some, some like shape. I need, basically what I realized was I need a niche. Mm. Okay. I need a niche and esports was that for me and I was already thinking about building my own company and I had an idea and that's actually the company I'm running now that I started in 2023 uh, uh 2022 sorry and um and there I I did everything that I could in esports I talked to managers I talked to org owners I dabbled in coaching I dabbled in streaming at the time um I worked for ESL as a player oh. manager and translator so that's where I met the Cloud9 guys the Rainbow Six guys um and that was in 2018 19 uh and what i ended up reaching was coaching and i was like okay i think there's an industry here let's have a look at the coaching industry with no intention of going fully pro and i just dabbled in coaching for free on my little stream with like six follow uh, six viewers and i grew from there and i was like okay let's learn this game fuck it i need to learn a game and i think i need to learn a little bit more of how it feels so i went from bronze to diamond yes how many uh, times Actually, that's a lie. At the time, I was gold. So I, was, I, w- I went up to gold after years of playing, and I was stuck there for, I think, four or five years. Okay. And I went from gold to diamond two in, like, six months. Whoa. Six months. My dream. <laughs> yeah, but I was really, really, like, focused and dedicated and, like, investing time while studying, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I guess that's how it started. But uh, all the things that you're telling is something that now I correlate with how the players perceive you. Yeah. Because in my case, I can correlate to some extent because I also did like yeah. many other jobs in my life. Like mm. I didn't picture myself being a League of Legends coach at the moment. Like I picture a different life and a life with kids too, with a family. Actually, I was almost married twice, but really, League of Legends happened more than one time. And nowadays I think that it's really hard to... F- have someone by my side that actually understands how much effort you have to put in, in comedy. the job to really be competitive. Like today, I'm going to end this and then I'm going to co- go back and speak with the players again. Yeah. And we had the Rainbow Six in the, in the, in the weekends. Yeah. And I have a game tomorrow that I have to double up on preparations to be on each, be on edge to talk to the players. So it's not a normal job. Yeah. I mean, if you want to make a difference, if com- you want to be... Yeah, absolutely. And competition takes everything. And that's why if you look at most athletes, they don't have good relationships. The ones that have successful relationships like Roger Federer generally have, and this is not to be sexist, but this is just a fact in sports psychology called servant-based uh, like relationships where the, the partner is fully supporting the, the, yes, the, exactly. the yeah, husband yeah. in every way. Like Roger is one, Novak Djokovic is another. The, the wives just exist to like make them better. And I think Tom Brady was also one until he said, I'm going to go back to football. And then what happened? They broke yeah, up. Yeah. Nada, right? I have yeah. many examples of that. And, and when you do show that, the yeah. players respect you way more. <clears throat> because, I mean, I always had that in my life because I was a, a player at some point. Yeah. And I had a hard time respecting coaches, not because of knowledge. And people have a different view on that. They think that what defines a coach is knowledge. And it's much more complex than that. And if you're not pulling out the work, the players won't respect you. Like if you are just a lazy coach, as they call. Yeah. And I had that on my life since I was a player. Many times I was a player and coach at the same times because we didn't have coaches on 2014. Like we didn't have players. Yeah. And sometimes you had to be both. And the base of coaching staff in Brazil is really, I don't say weak in the, in the, say in the kind of way, like they don't know nothing, but we have a, a little, a, a, 
we don't have a lot of coaches in Brazil. We don't have a lot of coaching staff in general in Brazil. Not only head coach, but we don't have a lot of uh, specialists. We don't have analysts. We don't have. It, it's hard because of the value of the region too. Like this thing about having a coaching staff to guide your players is somewhat new to Brazil. Yeah, I yeah. noticed that. The 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 way that the we never invest in this because kind of they job that here. It was useless on the beginning, yeah. and not just the the management, but the players. But it's meant to be. It, it's naturally like this because, uh, I think, in, in competition, and what I always tell my players is, is this: like every second, every decision, what you eat for breakfast, every word, like every click, everything matters in competition. Because yeah. in the end, and this is kind of how I view life as well, to be honest, and social media too. Hence my craziness. But I'll talk about that later. I think. In the end, it does come down to who does more than the other and who's smarter than the other and who worked harder and who worked better. Yes, right? this, the last part is super important. Better. Not just harder, but better. Yes, super important. Right? Yes. Yeah. And uh, I don't think that game knowledge is the most important thing either. I think what's the most important is actually uh, the effort. Because Work when, ethics when I didn't, and that's why Croc and I have such a good relationship, because if you want something more than anything, right? I, I, of your logic. I really believe this. If, you, cage could say. if mm-hmm. you want something more than anything, you will learn that skill. I didn't know anything and I learned quickly. And I learned quickly because I wanted it more than anything. I played more than the players. I, ta- I pestered players until I learned matchups. And then I built the skill set from there. And that's very, very hard to see in the esports industry. So, yeah, yeah I agree with you. I the- say we have a few really athletes here in Brazil. We have a lot of Exemplary ones. Yeah. Pro players. I, I put them in different kinds of uh, shelters, you know. One is a pro player. He's a guy who goes there, play a game, enjoy his status, enjoy the salary, enjoy the the, the, the fame. Yeah. And the other, the athlete, he gives everything to the game. Exactly. Here in Brazil, I see we have a few of that. You, seeing this below, you, you feel... We have a lot of athletes here in Brazil? No, no, no. Or not? No, no way, no way. Yeah. No. I know like a few. For example, I, I, one, one guy that stands out for me is I really like Karyok. From what I've seen, I think he's, he's phenomenal. He's actually way better on the way he deals with things. Like nowadays yeah. I am with him, like not directly, but I work in the same place as but him. But just from watching like yes. last year. Um, There's something there that people yeah. can't grasp. Uh, I mean, there are definitely a few athletes. I think Pro Delta is actually a, a really good athlete too, in terms of his mindset. Um, he was like, actually drilled with a mindset. Yeah, okay. last year. I see. Yeah, I see. you you spoke Confino with him. Process. You know, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I, I went back in like every day. Uh, I waited for him to go back home because we lived. Like, yeah, here. I think he. I think he grew a lot under you guys, um, for sure. For sure. Anyway, what we, we were talking about? We we're talking about uh, 2018. 2018. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah, you drive a lot. This is, <laughs> this is part so, of the so case. basically, how my coaching started was from a nobody that didn't know anything to. Once again, I, I said I said I always had that drive to like do things properly. So I read up on traditional education, because I was not particularly smart in school. I didn't pay attention in class, and I didn't have the best environment to study, and I didn't put the effort in. So I was like, okay, how do you learn properly? That's the first thing I did, and I wrote an article. I don't know if you know this, Shuffy. But I wrote an article on Reddit, and it's deleted now, but on like how to use traditional education paradigms and like ideas from journals, like uh, papers, uh-huh. into League of Legends. And the person that tweeted that, and I didn't have Twitter at the time, was Mark Merrill, who is Trindamir, the, founder, yeah, the guy yeah, that yeah. made League the of founder, Legends. The owner of League of Legends. So I was like, fuck it. I didn't miss an opportunity. I made Twitter. I had like 25 followers. I messaged Mark Merrill, do you want coaching? And I didn't know shit about the game. I was so shit at my job. I was so shit. And he said, yes. So I coached Mark Merrill as my first professional paid job in front of 450 people. <laughs> this is how I started that's coaching. That's amazing, seriously. This is how I started esports. No, really, like a lot of that's uh, still documented. You coached him on Trindamir? No, I coached him on Olaf and he was 
Uh, but it's he, the he same was, vibe. It's better than Trainer. He was he was okay. I think he was like platinum at the time. He's like solid oh. guy, you know. He's like not bad at the time, you know. I think he was better than me. Like whoa, I, I don't know what else. Platinum I was doing, is a great team. Um, and and that's where I got a little bit of traction, and then I started coaching a bunch of like oceanic people. I moved my way up uh, as like a casual thing, you know. Every day I'd set aside three four hours. I'd teach gold and platinum, and and then it got to the stage where I started coaching challenger players. Um, didn't do a great job, but they apparently thought I did because coaching there is also really, really shit, you know, in Oceania. And sometimes uh, you can, you don't need to be way better to make someone reflect on their actions. So. Yeah, exactly. It's just like the way you think, you know? Yes. And then they were like, this guy's good. And then the rumor spread and I got my first professional gig. So I was like, fuck it. I dropped university. I said, I'll give myself one year to succeed. I know Oceania is doomed because the first thing I did was market research. Same same reason I came to Brazil, right? What's this succeed for you? Succeed because is, one year is? is really like, yeah, like, succeed is like, I need to be out of the region. Okay. Ah, okay. okay. This was this. I need to not be in Oceania. Okay. Because, because? I, because I knew, because I'm, I'm a business guy. I knew that it was not feasible for me to be in, in Oceania. I knew that the region was doomed. Okay. Right? I think Brazil is different, but I thought Oceania was doomed even back in 2019, 2018. So I was like, one year to get out and go to America or Europe. And I did. And I did. So uh, that's why I'm still coaching to this day. We lost the summer. Um, Croc got gastritis. He was really, really, really sick. It was the worst year in every way. When I first came there, we didn't have an office. Um, we had an Airbnb with three rooms. Croc Holy didn't have shit. his visa until three days before the tournament. So yeah. we didn't scrim. There's a lot of things that happened. And I slept on a tilted couch because we didn't have a bed for like two weeks. We scrimmed out of an internet cafe with a sub. It was like the worst ever in every way. And we went 10-0 it went or 9-0. And then we ended second 19-4 or something like that. But I didn't do much strategically. It was just mindset, right? So then I was like, okay, I can be better than everyone else here because I think everyone else is like tremendously terrible at what they do. Um, and then I got an opportunity to go to the Golden Guardians Academy at the time. Um, and the head coach there was, you know, transphobic, homophobic. Oh, yes, this is, this is I don't remember topic. that. Yeah, I can't really talk about it. I, don't I spoke remember up. That. I spoke up. I'm not going to talk more in details. Yeah, yeah. He got fired, but I got fired for trying to get him fired uh, first. <laughs> you, you were fired because you're trying... To get yeah, him fired. Because he, he found out. And then we got fired already. And then I got fired. And then he got fired because a player lost his shit at him. And then and then I was out of a job. So I went back to Oceania. I was oh, building gosh. a coaching system for Dire Wolves. I was actually not the head coach. The league PD is wrong there. I was, I was like head of coaching staff. I was training the coaches for a few months. And the idea was I would find a European gig. Then I volunteered for a team called crazy for like two weeks because their head coach was also incredible like in every negative way possible then i got my <laughs> then i got my job at vitality b that's what happened you know yeah and so when i first came to france in vitality b i was like i'm gonna stay in this team forever so Why? i said i'll take minimum salary i was on a six-month contract they wanted to test me out i was a filler coach right because at the time their head coach got fired so they just wanted to swap head coaches in lecs so they needed to find someone in the academy so i was like look guys I'll do good. Give me a contract for two, three years. I'll take minimum wage, which is like 36, 37K there, right? Year. Which is a, which is a lot here. It's 150K, yeah, BRL. But yeah, no, no, no. In a year. It's, it's monthly. It's monthly? No, 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 year. year. Yeah, yeah. What the fuck? No, 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 36K monthly? So, so three, no, 3K, no, no. 3K so per 3K month. K month. Uh, 3K. So yeah, yeah. 15K, 15K BRL. I said, I'll take okay. minimum. Sign me for two years. And Vitality mm. took two months to get back to me. Mm. Two months middle of off season and by then i had like five other offers for like because i had a I, i got a very good reputation working in france that was like my first big breakout um my players were speaking very good about me i think i did well in media and uh i was getting five six times the, the money in terms of offers uh, and they came back at me they knew about my offers and offered me 55k or Whoa. 60k which was a slap on the face because if they told me if they agreed instantly i would have signed I told them this. I want to stay in, a, in one place, right? They didn't come back for a really, really, really long time. And I had the opportunity at LEC to go to Rogue. Um, so I went. But my career was like very unique in the way that I started. And the way that I chose my teams and the reason I got promoted every single year 
in my career. So I went from head coach OPL to NA Academy, which is technically a promotion in terms of regions. Yeah. Then I went to head coach in academy in, in Europe. Uh-huh. Then I went to assistant in LEC to strategic in LEC to now head coach in Brazil, right? Um, uh, and the reason I got promoted was I was known as the guy that would be really good at putting out fires. So if the house was on fire and everything was shit, I could come there and bring structure and I could bring organization to the team. That was what I was known for. That was what I was good at. And that's how I kept getting promoted year after year. But that also meant that I wasn't on top teams. On paper. Because top teams wouldn't be on fire. Because Rogue, Rogue was meant to be bottom two. I don't know. You probably watched it back then, but yeah. Rogue was meant to be ninth place. Um, our budget was not particularly great either. And we, we lost Inspired and Han Summer, who is... You know, two superstar players. Yeah. And we got Malrung, he was a sub, and LCK, and before that, you know, he had a very storied history, and uh, Comp, who was 10th place in Vitality, right? So we're meant to be mega shit, and then we went finals. We went, I think, 9-0 into, like, second place. It was amazing. It was... Yeah. It was a good run. Yeah. It was a good run. The um, circumstances... It was a good run. Yeah. So I think that's how my career started, but I had really good people around me. For example, when I first started, I had an emphasis on performance coaching. So I got um, education from Nam Bolden, who was a performance coach for Red Bull, Stephanie Gilmore, who's like a world championship surfer, many football teams, Google, etc. I always had like really exceptional, traditional coaches from traditional backgrounds on how to be a better coach. And I think that's what made the difference in the end. That's what made the difference. So yeah, that's my story. You said you are very good in coordinate bad circumstances. I mean, for esports, yeah. Yeah, in esports. Yeah, in the world, probably not. No, but no, no, but in esports. Young industry, yeah. For sure. Because why are you asking that? Because I, we have a lot of kinds of different coaches. Yeah. We have motiv- motiva- motivational coaches who good, gave good speeds and inspire our players. We have coaches then literally teach something about League of Legends, some players. What kind of coach you define yourself? Because we have a lot of kinds of coaches come here in Brazil. Some some players say, so this coach teach me everything I know. I don't know everything about the game. And they teach me macro. They teach me, they teach me micro. And they we hear a lot, oh, this coach only say motivational things to me. And they put me in another place when I go to start the game. So what kind of coach you define yourself? What do you think I am? I think you are both. Why? Because when I see behind the stars, you are a very motivational coach. You speak a lot. You say, you're fucking amazing job, guys. You are amazing. But when I talk talk to Gigo in tomorrow, I don't know, in Sunday, I talk to Gigo in Sunday, he he says a lot of good things about you and how Mm. you coordinate him in game and make him a better player. So, I don't know what kind of coach you are because I see one thing, but I hear other things. What do you think, Joker? Mm, I think it's the opposite. Mm. I think that we have a problem, especially with the players you are coaching right now. They had a problem with coaches for a long time. Mm-hmm. They had bad coach, bad coaches for a long time. Yeah. And when they were faced with you, that's not only a hardworking coach, but someone that actually connects to them, And I think that's the important part. You're connected to them. Yeah, I think so. On a personal level, on a professional level, everything, you're connected. Yeah. And fast. And when you did that, actually you can motivate them because of that. But uh, I don't think that I can label you. You actually do what's better for the team. And at the moment, you organize them. And you make them, you're making this team, the key team, Be the best version of themselves. And this is something that I had a, a part of my, of my questions for you because at the moment you are working with two players, like every single player there, but two players especially, that you're doing something that people may not grasp. But for example, Zamis is someone that for two years, I know that you're laughing, I have his picture in my face too, and he came here the first time not... On air, it was very funny when I saw him the first time. But yeah, he was good a while ago. He was very good a while ago. And for the fans that actually watch here, I always said that he would be probably the best jungle, the best Brazilian jungle in the future, like two, three years ago. When I was on Wide Rift, you remember that. Yeah, yeah. I always said that. But last year, he had a shit year. Yeah. 
Okay, and not they say it is incredible at screens, <laughs> but seeing stage. No, he had overall shit year because what I expected is that would be the year that he would break out. Yeah, break out, and he didn't. Now he's breaking out again, and that's a point for you because you actually connected with him on something that didn't connect last year. Okay, I know that it's complex than that. That there's a team, there's a situation, but actually worked and Gigo is the second one yeah because he actually played last year with Keith and now he's also popping up yeah so to have that happening the only thing I can be certain is that you actually connected to the essence of the two players that was kind of lost for some time yeah so the motivational part I think is a consequence because they actually trust you yeah I mean so to answer your question yeah um, do you know you, you know Yamato Cannon, right? What Yamato Cannon? The, the, ah, Yamato the, Cannon. When yeah. I hear him talk, it makes me want to go out and die for him. You know, he has this deep, masculine. That, that, that's voice. that's the, and, the face. And he, and he uses the he uses the you know the he's got his like he's got a nice visual as well. A nice build, yeah. He, he looks very good. He's handsome. He speaks charismatically. He uses cool words like you know the way he talks to his yeah, English is look, charming. I'm not a natural born leader. I don't think, I think very few people are. And I'm also not naturally charismatic or anything like that, nor do I think I am charismatic at all. My secret and the type of coach I am is I'm just, a, I think, in my, at least I like to think this, I think I'm a decent human being. I think it starts there. That's important. <laughs> that's most than, that's much most important. Than yeah. to me. I think if, I think if you know what your job is. And for me, I fundamentally understand two things. And I think that separates me from a lot of coaches. One, coaching is not about me. Coaching is not about me. Coaching is about the players. Everything that I do is for the players. Everything that we do is for the players. Everything that every second, every decision, every word that comes out of my mouth, what, what I do for them needs to be about them, not about me. Um, and I know I do a lot of media. That's also true. But I also take a lot of time to avoid the media too for example when i talk to them oh, you did recently no but that's conscious as well i always you know yes I sit, you, you I sit did down. it consciously recently so i sit down with the behind the stars uh content team and i say look yeah. there's too much of me things like this or image making or setting up interv interviews or thinking about how i sell my player in the best way like these things everything that i do i think first of all um is about them and the th thing is like players are human beings so they're not stupid. They right? notice. They're, they're not stupid. So they know if your intentions are good. And that's everything that I'm trying to do here. Uh, and I think that's, that was the first thing. Uh, so because I understand that, I think people naturally tend to trust me more in the environment. People tend to work better. And the, the second, other than being a decent human being, is just knowing, like, just being educated on the topic. So for example, I grew up in a really toxic household environment. I improved my life and worked on myself in a very toxic way. So for example, um, it was do or die and I'm a piece of shit if I don't. Like this, you know. Uh, and that carried on to my coaching naturally actually. Something that I learned from Peter was, was and Rob, Rob Davies, I don't know if he watches these uh, podcasts, but the performance coach, what he taught me was how to build up your players and being educated on the topic of punishment versus, you know, reward and how to actually build up your players in that way. So the language I use is predefined, well thought out. And it, it's done in a way where you don't have to be naturally charismatic or an incredible leader if you know what to say. It's like having a script, really. So instead of saying, you are so shit at what you do. I say, I think we can embrace the challenge here and step it up. It's a really fucking big difference, you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, to tell you the truth, I'm, I don't think I'm a motivational coach. I think I'm a little bit of a strategic one because I just Background. come from a better region, like in terms of lol skill, to be honest. But it's not like I'm insane at the game either. It just comes down to, I think I'm just like a decent human being. And the way I've lived my life was always uh, don't live your life and do things that you'll regret when you're older. Cause like time is limited. Time is precious. So 
when I'm 60, 70 years old, I don't want to look back and be like, fuck, I lived my life wrong. So every one of my decisions that I've made in my life so far, and I can say this proudly, I don't regret. Uh, I wish I could have done better in certain circumstances, but I don't regret. And I think that is the basis of my coaching philosophy, you know, about the players and just being not a douche, you know? I truth. Talk yeah. about this KD, this Vivo KD stars. How you put this team together? Because mm. I think I say from, I'll, I'll, I say that in a lot of years in the sequence, we have here in Brazil, a shitty scouting. Yeah. We don't know who we, the teams have, they, the teams don't know who they hired, what the qualities of the players, when they hire some kind of foreign year players, Koreans or Europeans, here's a very, it's, we have three times, five times we have Europeans in Brazil. The most of times you have Koreans. They don't know if they speak English, how they, if they think, how they play, who they are. So we just hire people, we burn money and we make teams when they see it's like, whoa, this is a super team. But in the practice, they flop every time and for the first time i see someone making a strategy way to put together a team how you do that and how you convince it kate to do the way you do the this vivicate stars I, i made a very condensed shorter version of what the process was on my youtube channel yeah at silvia i see i see yeah, yeah. you watch that um but that, that was a that was a very very condensed version first of all i want to say that people give me a lot of credit people say you're leading this team and you're changing the project, but it actually starts from the management because they hired me, right? I think something that I really resonated with, and I'm just a cog in a really big machine, is that they're very process driven. And this is very important in, in traditional sports. It's very important in organizations, companies, and most importantly for us, esports teams. So uh, I needed people that can follow that process. Uh, and for me, be in line with what, not just management wants to do, but what, what I want to do there. So that was like one of the first criteria I looked for. People that can be, or have the potential to be process orientated. Some players are incapable of that. So when you look at traditional like sports psychology, players are generally driven by the results yeah. and their gen individual performance. Their review method and their learning method is based on this as well. So for example, uh, when you look at a 35 minute game, they look at the dragon. Because they're like, okay, we lost the fight when we died at Elder Dragon. But how about the 15 minutes before the Elder Dragon, right? Uh, and so that's the first thing I did. I can't talk about certain things because I think it's a competitive edge. But what I will say is that it, it started off with management Hugo, specifically Hugo, Pedro. Uh, and then uh, we aligned on what we thought were non-negotiables for the team. So what are some values that we absolutely all agree that cannot be crossed? Okay. Like if you cross this line, you're gone kind of thing, you know? Uh, and then second was data. So I have a guy from Europe that I know. His name is Mephisto Lewis, Louis Legendre. He's very, very good with data. And uh, he also works with, I think, uh, the XG2 analysts and he helped us. And we, it was a paid service called Gattaca AI, um, exclusive to us. But now I think you guys can bid for it if you want. I mean, it was one of the deals that I would help him promote it. Uh, And then it was like a combination of eye test interviews, uh, you know, what I think is important in the team environment. What I learned a lot from Peter last year was, to be honest, I didn't learn anything about the game. No offense, Peter. Like, if anything, I think it was the other way around. But he did teach me how to be a better coach and he did teach me how to manage people. Uh, and something that he always stressed was team dynamics and, and culture and, and, and like, Dynamics in general, when it comes to organizations. So for example, having a leader, who do you want leading the, the team? How, who do you want to have like as a role model? Um, what kind of personalities and, and traits should be, you be looking for? These like uh, little things that I learned from Peter, which in the end became a very good investment for me of my time. So that, I think that's, that's like how it started, you know? It was a combination of like data, um, what I think is necessary in a team, what are our, our values. Uh, and then, then it came down to risk reward. So I was pretty mind blown. No one wanted Pedro like Decimus because I thought that he was like so fucking good. Uh, and what in my research, what I realized was like, okay, 
I do agree that he's for Brazil, he was already really good, right? I don't think I helped him that much strategically, that much. I did, for sure, but not that much. But the thing is, these things that are not that much matter a lot when it comes to the competitive game, and he was just lacking knowledge, right? So in scrims, what happens is like, you, you know, Decimus, he's like insane mechanically, right? Yes. So he would do something stupid, run bot, and he'd get three kills. And because he's mechanically good, he'll just end up with 15 kills. He's and he'll carry would him. often on screens, yeah. yeah. But when you get to stage... When you get to stage, everyone's so much passive, right? Yes. And the thing is, like, More the things careful. I've seen in Brazil, scrims, it's like, it gives me PTSD, you know? Like, I've seen some, <laughs> I've seen some shit, you know, like... Whoa, I'm seeing it every day, too. Oh, my God, it's disgusting. If you, if you think you were seeing some shit, I don't, yeah, I don't understand why um, they do trust that. Trust me, bro, yeah. it's... I really don't understand why they do that, because they... Sp- Spread it there. No, but that's training. what I don't understand about Jocko too. Like, how can you look at this for 10 years and be like, that's what I'm going to do. Instead of earning 20 times my salary, I'm going to like keep watching these scrims, you know? Like, it's mind blowing for me. Anyway. Actually, uh, last year, it's because, it's complex because it has a lot of ups and downs. But the first time that I thought that this was actually, maybe I would do other thing was last year. <laughs> When I went to, <laughs> yes, yes, I told that to Shepi on I background. I think I told you. I told, I told the Prieto. I am yeah. the, he's like the third host. He couldn't come today. But last year, um, end of last year, when I was on Academy in Ignis, I'm still there, but like, yeah. I didn't have holidays because yeah. the, the, the family, the, the inclusive scene has a different calendar. So we played to December. And I actually spent my entire year watching screams that are like way above the level that I had watched in my career. And it's not like shaming it. It's because it's a lower level. Like yeah, yeah. Inclusive teams are like T3 teams and Academy is actually lower. They're so, beginning the path. No? Yeah, they're beginning the path. So no shame on them. Yeah. But mm-hmm. in the end of the year, like Christmas Eve, I was like, okay. <laughs> I'm watching too many, too, 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 too many like screams <coughs> that are bad quality and maybe I want to do something else but when the other year start, like it was not, not Christmas Eve it was like November November I had that thought and when I assembled the, this uh, Academy Rooster because the first one like last year it was mostly Sarkis I didn't like I went in the middle of the year but this one it was me and Sarkis so I actually did as you did, like scout yeah. players, personalities, for example. One of the players that I would never have on my team if I didn't like interview him was the jungler, yeah. Tato. Because I thought he was very bad. And yeah. you want to change your mind? When I talked to him and saw him on screams, yeah. especially when I talked to him. Okay. Because I saw qualities that, like you said, qualities that maybe he was good mechanically, but he didn't have like knowledge and he didn't put you use some qualities that he had as personal traits for the team. And I said, okay, this team, maybe I can watch more shitty screams because I think that we can make the difference. Yeah. Like on Academy. Yeah. And we were making the difference until you got to kill to... <laughs> no, this, this, this is joking. This is joking. Like, we, we lost that to ourselves, okay? It has been unfair. Though. Like, Quats, Quats did, the, yeah. our mid laner. He did good. I was actually proud of him. Yeah. Because, uh, just contextualizing... Like last week, we were like uh, zero defeats on Academy, and we were 2 1 on the Super Week, 2 2 0. Then we fought Kid, but it was to cool extent of Leleco on <laughs> Academy. And my major concern was if Quads would hold it up. Yeah. Naturally. Yeah. When, I, when everything ended, I said, okay, guys, the only guy that I know that didn't underperform was actually Quads. Yeah. So I'm proud of you. Yeah. And the rest of the players we messed it up on some some yeah. points but joking aside it's much about this academy team yeah. being 100 percent sincere okay because yeah it's hard it's but it, very hard it like drive it makes you like happy like yes it makes you. me happy going there every day yeah and actually seeing for example if you look at tato case for example he was ninth on last tournament he was yeah. on ntz and seeing now that he's getting like MVPs in a row, because actually what I am really good with is jungler and support. Like yeah. I can really help those two improve a lot. 
a lot, like quickly. And the way that they interact with others. Yeah. And when I saw him like getting four MVPs like straight and I said, okay, I'm, I actually think I'm making a difference here. So not just for the yeah. team, but for him. And that motivates me. Yeah. But some, something about that, um, and we are going a bit, bit off topic, but I guess is I also don't really understand, you know, those people that play games on like ultra hard mode. Like, I feel like you're kind of doing that, you know? So I don't, don't, basically don't. what Joko, what Joko is telling me is he's a bit of a, a, a masochist and yes, that's, that's, for sure. that's fine. You know, I respect your uh, preferences. Uh, but anyway, back to Pedro Decimus. So I was really mind blown because I watched him play in Korea and I thought he was really good. And I thought his attitude towards improvement and towards like coaching in general, in terms of like feedback was incredible. Response too quickly. Uh, and he, if I teach him one thing, he learns 10 things. I actually think he's a genius. And what I told management was, and I still maintain this and I hope Pedro doesn't get a big head because of it. I think Pedro Decimus has a potential to be the best jungler Brazil has ever had in its history. I agree. That's how good I think he is. I agree. And these, cool. and what blows my mind is that these organizations, no flame to pain, <laughs> no one reaches out to this guy. No one. That is bizarre. That is bizarre. Because a simple eye test, you can see he's incredible. You watch the games from, uh, from Fluxo and you know he's just like, he just doesn't know what he's doing. Yes. And you watch his scrims and you know he just doesn't know what he's doing. You just know he has like really good hands and he knows some stuff about the game, but like not enough. So it, it, it's showing. And nobody wants to pick him up. It, it's, I have it, a you have just it. like a really powerful weapon and just I'm can't pretty point sure. it. Yeah. Like, Seos' salary, I'm pretty sure, is like 90% of our budget. No, no, no seriously. I don't know. I know Seos' yeah. salary. I think it's 90% of our player budget. He but earns thing, more than me, bro. Just, just getting on that topic before changing, uh, I actually, I don't talk about what, exactly what I prioritize on. I say the yeah. things about the Zemis, for example. But he already has some, some stuff on him as a player and as a, mm. a person that it takes a lot of time to teach and some mm. things you can't teach. Mm. And he already has that. So the part that lacks, it's, much easier to yeah. put in there. That's why I believe that he can be that too. And I think that he won't get a big head because of last year. Because last year, he yeah. was like... I think a little different. Because uh, I see here in Brazil, all the community in the teams, yeah. they have... Um, they get... They, they, how do I say that? It's very important to them how the community sees their players. So many times they, they don't reach to some players. They don't bring some players to their team because the community say there's a Mimi. They don't yeah. play very well. But in the reality, if you work with him, with him he will improve yeah. a lot. But a lot of teams here in Brazil don't want to do that. Don't want to know the real potential of this player. They just want to pay. He them. only hears the community and say, if I bring this guy to my team, they will, they, they, my, my fans will eat me alive. So I don't want this risk here with me. So in many times we lose a lot of very good players because the teams don't want to put this risk on the line. Yeah. I think that. Yeah. And it takes some balls too, really, like to, to yeah, get yeah, this yeah. guy. Um, and but, why you, you, you choose him? I mean, as I said, I have big balls. So it's, okay. I have gigantic balls, you know? So it's like, now that yeah. aside, I just think he's an, an, an incredible athlete. And what also helped is our data. So Gaddock AI, um, that's what it's called. It's on my YouTube channel if you want to know details. Uh, and he was the number one jungler there. Like by far. In data. By far. Not even close. Prods is up there too. Prods is number one. And uh, we actually wrote in our scouting list, Pro, Pro Delta, not possible. And then this incredible organization with tradition said, here it is, you can have him. <laughs> I love Pen Gaming. Thank you. <laughs> I love its fans though, really. No flame, but... And uh, I think uh, it just comes down to environment and, and fit. But yeah, I mean, how I build the, build the roster is, is something like that. We talk about Tuk. He, because he played yeah. in academy last week, and now we have this 
situation he's don't play in in the second order and we ha you play uh, with Leleco today yeah when the situation happened and yeah. you needed to make that substitution that change what the first thing the first thing he comes to your head because KD is a process of evolution and then you lose your number one player and you need to change him for academy player but you tell me in Sevilla Leleco is amazing before the game yeah and you were you're absolutely right yeah. but the first impact you lose your star player what uh, in what way Kate sees this happening what you think about all the situations before Leleco uh, play her first game in Sebilo this was one of my first this is one of my other times where I felt like I chose the right team because um, it's same with data the data costs a lot of money the data that we got costs five figures Oh yeah, so it's like a it's like a salary, you know. Yeah, yeah. So instead of picking randomly, we paid that amount of money, and for an orc to do that is very rare. I, I never it, it, hear no, I've never heard of before. this in Brazil. Yeah, and I told them they're like, okay. At that point, I was like, wow, with Lelic, it was the same. Uh, number one th th thought that goes through my mind is obviously player well-being. As I said, like, you know, if something's not okay, and I think Tukui needed time. Uh, and needing he needed to be able to rest. So, so uh, <laughs> it's all good. Uh, so, um, I knew no matter what, Taku would have to go. But I wasn't too worried. Like what I told management was, I think that if anything, we might even play better because Taku is not at a hundred percent, and Leleko makes the other four better. And I spend a lot of time with Academy. I don't know how much you heard of that. Uh, I don't really pay too much attention, but I spend a lot of time with Academy. I have a they won today. Yeah, yeah that's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. Did your team win today? Before here. Awesome. Um, you guys need to lose one time. No, no, we can't. <laughs> Please we lose have, one time. We have a calendar, like I, I have a calendar link where mm -hmm. people can just click and book my time. So, uh, for example, I, I'll take the academy boys out to dinner, etc. I'll coach them one-on-one. -on -one. I'll coach the coaches too. And we should talk about Mitohara and Lux too because I think they're really, really, really potential. You know that uh, Lux, I, I actually encourage him to coach. try coaching. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think he told me. He told me. Encouraging a lot yeah. on the off season because I knew that he would be good. Uh yeah, he's he's very very smart. Um, anyway, what's I saying? Oh yeah, so I told management, look, like let's do this. And it's a pretty ballsy move. It was on Friday afternoon. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, I received him the mail. The mail. I don't remember the time, but it's very late. It was, it was Friday, set six p.m. Yeah, or something. Uh, I in the morning I sent Toku he was off. And at this point, I was at my point where I was like seriously concerned. So I told management in the morning before our first game, hey guys, uh, you know, I think there might be a chance we need to let Took rest this week. You know? Uh, and then after the first game, I realized I had to. So it was technically a, it wasn't a bench, but it was technically like a forced bench. Yeah, yeah. And then we played four games with Lelico. Uh, three games in, I decided... We need to play with Lilica this weekend instead of making Tuku play, play in this condition. And then we went. But because I spent time with Lilica or watched a lot of Academy you scrims, actually knew. I knew that he would be a good fit. And I also talk about the game, but also how we coach in, in Academy too. So the way we play is like not identical because I give a lot of autonomy to the to the coaches, but it was good enough where they trained him very, very well. Like Mitohara Lux did a really, 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 really good job with Lilica, I think. Really fucking good job with Lelico. And Lelico actually described it as like one of the, like the best coaches I've had. The best coaches I've had. So yeah, uh, that was what was going through my head. And then I went on stage and I was like, I knew we'd win, I think. But if it didn't win, I was, I was scared because I, I wasn't sure how. It would like, be perceived. Like benching Tukui, he was my best player. Yeah. At least the community perceived it that way. I would be known as Bagre of the century, you know? I would be known as like the idiot of the century on a Friday m m afternoon, you know? So I was like, palm I I'm like getting sweaty palms thinking about it. And we ha had a meeting with the president. So Pedro, uh, big Pedro. We had a meeting with Vex and we just sat down and made the decision and it went well, luckily. And uh, he he's doing really well. Yeah, the, you, you have like people with you that actually went through a lot. Like Vex, for example, he went through a lot of those cases. Yeah. Of cases he, that... He's more knowledgeable than me. Yeah, like he... His background is amazing. Mm. 
not just like traditional uh like this because actually he took a break from yeah. esports and focused on like normal life <laughs> business things and then he came back better but he went through a lot with the teams so i think that this case you are doing like leleco an amazing not a favor but you are like helping him achieve something that i see in academy all the time like there are players there not just on my team but on other teams he's an example for sure that just can't make it through because the opportunity doesn't happen and you guys trust yeah. him the thing is like i was really sad about leleco because i have certain people that get my soft spot for example gref does one because <clears throat> i was in cb lol and we had the little bit of a social media debacle it was my mistake i want to be very clear i was being a bit of an idiot in mid scrims i didn't point out red canets i didn't say what the scrim name was so there's nothing unprofessional about it but it was still not cool because it was like middle of the scrims right so it was my bad grafta comes to me and he says look mate my bad and already i feel really bad because i'm like I thought we were over it. I thought it was my fault, but maybe he's just bringing it up again. And then he says, look after my little brother. Giga, you know? Yeah. That stuff like really gets me, you know? It's like, it, it touches the soft part of my heart and yeah. I'm like, oh, it's just crept up. You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like this. Um, and uh, Leleko was one of them. But it was really sad because in my mind, I was like, there's no way this guy gets to play and it's so sad because I think he's so good, you know? Like, I think he's so good. I think he's under, under, uh, valued and he's 24 he's not even like i mean he looks 35 that's why maybe people discriminate him no flame bro sorry um but he's like he's 24 and this kid i'm a workaholic right so if i'm there from 10 to 4 a.m he's leaving after me or just before me that's crazy it's, it's crazy uh, bizarre you actually looked at his his splits like his best yeah of course i watched i mean i was part of the reason he's here right but um he wasn't lucky because yeah. the splits that he actually overperformed he was like for a myriad of regions it was like shadowed but he started late he started really late in his sports and he carried Cade last year yes, i really yes. think he carried Cade academy and he's so fucking good and i was like but i have this french god right <laughs> i imported this french god and i have this kid that works he's all about league I, I actually tease him a lot because you know I'm a bit of an idiot and I go hey Leleko when are you getting a girlfriend are you getting Muito Mullers are you getting DMs because you're an MVP he's like League of Legends this guy is like he, he's dating he, League of he's, Legends he's one of mine yeah <laughs> see he, he's, he's, like from he's against club. love yeah. no but the he's like club. you know a, a joke, guys, a is joke. that what you call it a yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. this guy is all about league and he just hit every spot and when it came to time to make the decision, I was like, I'm glad that he actually got an opportunity to be with here. And I know that I can provide him a really good opportunity, you know? Um, yeah, that's really special. Yeah. So, yeah, that's cool. You there mean, is any chance he, he took to come back to play in the playoffs or in the finals if you reach there? Or no this, so Lelek will go into play all this split? Yes. Zero chance. Oh. Zero chance. Not in split one. Maybe split two, but for me, a lot can change. Like, I, I, I really, I really believe in Took, and yeah. I think that he is fundamentally a fighter, uh, and he's the guy that he was feeling very unwell. He does his best to mask, right? Yeah. But anyone with decent EQ can see through it, and he says, "I'm fine. Let me play. Let me play. Let me play." He's feeling terrible. That's the kind of guy he is. I'm sure that he'll get well, but for me, these kind of things take time. Yeah, mental health always takes time. So for me to put pressure, or for me to even think about putting Takui in in playoffs. Is not only a discredit to Leleko and yeah. his effort and how well he's doing in scrims and whatnot, but it's also, uh, I think, very bad for Tuk. There's just no chance. Maybe he split two, but I think it's unlikely. But three remains with team. Yeah, I think I mean, after end. split one, we will reevaluate what's best. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, we do need to think about uh, Tukui's well being yeah. as well and, and what's best for the team in general. And I also have to think about Leleko. You know, for me, I think of myself as the leader of, uh, you know, 20 people, you know, as the, the coaching staff, the performance team, uh, Academy and CV Law for me is one team. And Leleko is also my player, right? And if he's yeah. playing this well, I can't, it doesn't make sense, you know, I can't do that. 
And about your five years playing here in Brazil, this is very exotic to us because here in Brazil, the teams are, they need everything for today or yesterday. Yeah. You know, they don't trust in, in long term yeah. plans. How you convince Cage to do that? And how real is this plan to you? You have yeah. a five years contract with Cade or is something you just doing year after year? Yeah, I, I can just be super honest with this one. Um, it's absolutely <clears throat> real. I First of all, I want all the teams that were with me in the past to regret your decision on not making me head coach and not giving me this decision because, <laughs> you know, it, it's 100% real. This is something that I always wanted to do. Um, it's actually a three-year contract because you're not allowed to have five-year contracts with Riot with a two-year extension clause. Okay. Um, where if both parties agree, et cetera, et cetera. Um, our trust is at a level where like there's not even a buyout. Like I can leave tomorrow if I want. Okay. Uh, there's no buyout, but I will never take any offer. Like I can say it right now in public in front of how many, however many people. If I don't know, Pen Gaming come tomorrow and say here's here's um you know 200k rei a month, come to Pen Gaming. I say no. I say fuck off. Yeah. Seriously? Yeah. I mean, you should see the offers I had in America. If I was moved by money, it's not like this, you know. Like, I don't want to be that guy, but like Brazil and Korea and Ch Brazil, Korea, China are the only three regions that don't respect my work. That's like mind blowing for me. Like in, in Europe, I have many, many people that respect my work that have offers in, in NA as well. I had the offers, uh, much, much more money. Um, and Brazil was one of the countries. Korea and China, I understand, right? Because it's like completely different culture yeah, and yeah. they don't know of me and you need to know people. But Brazil is mind blowing because they're like, this guy is the biggest scam artist and shit like this when I was coming here, right? But no, like for me, it's about building something. It's about loyalty. Pedro and Hugo have gone out of the way to look after me. I'm here to stay. I'm here to build a project. Absolutely real. And it's not about me convincing them. It was about them convincing me. <clears throat> you know what Hugo said in our first meeting? He said, I am a terrible negotiator <laughs> for saying this and I shouldn't say this, but. Uh, you the 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 cards are in your the ball is in your court. It's up to us to convince you. That's Whoa. what he told us. Told me, yeah. Like even uh, in CBL, there was offers that was higher, money wise. Yeah, you had other offers, other offers yeah. here in CBL. Close to a million. Close to a million year. Yeah. And you choose Kate because they give you what you want. In yes. Yeah. It's more in in North America. That's amazing. That's a fact. It's not me that convinced. It's it's not me that wanted the five year project. It's not me that convinced them that I want a five year project. They want a five year. It was project. them that wanted to build something long term. I think Hugo is special. Hugo is special, and I think uh, Pedrong is special. Pedrong is maybe the first real business guy that I've seen in esports that are, is really smart. And in the end of these five years, what you want to build in Cade and Sibilo? What's your goal in the final of these five years? Dynasty. Multi-year championship. The best organization. The organization where players want to come to Cade. Organization where overseas players want to come. For example, we have allocated a budget every year to build the infrastructure so that gringos want to come here. Uh, for example, before, Cade didn't provide housing for gringos. No Korean will ever join this team if it's like this. No European. We're, we're building that up. We're building that contract up. We're building many things. We're investing in many things. I can't go into details, but they're different. Yeah. I, I don't know if I've already said too much. Maybe I get in trouble after this. But. <laughs> no, no. It's, yeah. a, it's, not, it's okay. Yeah. So how you see the level of Sibilo today? Because when we get the beginning of the championship, Katie was in the five, six position. And yeah. today you share the leadership with Peng Amy. Yeah. A lot of change. A lot of teams change. A lot of the game you play change. Yeah. What do you think happened in the in the course of the the championship to this happen today? And you see Sebelo is in a higher level, or the players the, the teams play in a lower level because of that the championship is so struggle. I mean, personally, I think the level in CBLO, to be completely honest with you, is not particularly high. Yeah. Across the board. Um, but it, it, for me, it just came down to who wants it more. 
That's what I think. I think Cade works smarter. I think we work harder. I think we work better. And nobody in CBLO wants it more than us. That's what I think. Nobody. Because like, if you put us on paper, like, no coach is going to be in a room with me and want it more than me. And no player is going to want it more than my players. Like, think about it on paper. Sure, they want it. Sure, they're hungry. But Pedro has never won a title. And he's a title level player. Pro Delta is very discriminated against, I think, for like how good yeah. he is because of like the shows and whatnot. Whereas I don't think it's entirely his fault at all. Um, Smiley, it is maybe his last or second last shot. Uh, you know, Lelica, I didn't even need to say. Tukui was the same, really, I think, uh, in terms of like what he wants to achieve. And then Gigo, I mean, this guy is just a born and bred champ. He's you know? amazing. I think there are some players in, in teams, like, for example, I think Titan is like one of those people that really, really want to win. Yeah. Um, and Gigo's changed a lot from the last year. He's another person today. Yeah. So he has a gameplay and has but a person. He, it, but it's like that because he wants it. You know, like in the off season, we worked 15, 14. Okay. Let me tell you a story. Okay. <clears throat> I've never swapped players in my career. This is the first time I've done it, Whoa. right? Intentionally. I, when I brought Smiley to our first scrim, <coughs> and it was against our academy, we went 1-5 versus academy. Um, one win, five losses versus academy in our first scrim. And I looked at Smiley play for the first three days. And I was like... <laughs> ah, I'm I mean, focused. Ludwig, Ludwig and, you know, like, did we make it like... And Hugo was like, ah, did we make a mistake? Listen. The five players, Kui included, worked 14, 15 hours a day, minimum, close to 16 hours a day, basically just living and breathing league every day wow. with no break for like a month. <clears throat> That's healthy in your opinion? No, it's fucking unhealthy. So we are But it's necessary. So now, now we forced, no, it's not necessary. What? Okay. I couldn't get them off. I couldn't get them off the PC. <laughs> They're like, no, I have to play solo queue. Like Ludwig was like, I need to play. This is the kind of guy he is, you know. Okay. The same in the pen gaming game, you know. Like we were playing. And it's the kind of guy Ludwig is, Smiley is. Just to, to mention yeah. something to the audience. Pessoal, a nossa internet, ela tá passando por um momento de estabilidade. Uh, mas eu já falei com a produção, tá? Ela tava indo ao banheiro, eu, eu vi o pessoal reclamando. Tá. Ela tá caindo e voltando, o que tá segurando é o reserva. É o no break. Tá. Mas uh, we're having some internet stability, like the, the live is still on. But sometimes the quality drops a bit because the no break is like tanking. The oh, we're meant to have a break? No, 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 no. No break is the name of the oh, device right, right, that right. is like okay. tanking it. when. It, yeah, but okay. we're still live. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't worry. Okay, great. If you want to go to the bathroom on any time, any time, you can. Okay. That's more fine. water too. Just ask me. You have Thank coke, you. water, and, and we have a and lot of questions from the audience here. Yes, that was the second thing I was yeah. about to tell you. Like lots of people asking. Okay, okay. We'll, we'll answer the questions. But like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to talk about uh, just, Ludwig just, a bit. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, lost, when we played with Kaboom the first time in the yeah. first round, we were so scared. But I was like, okay, maybe it's because it's the second game of the year, you know? Okay. And then we played versus, um, what was the team? It was uh, Red and we shit ourselves, right? So I was telling them, guys, we can win, we can win. But in my mind, I was like, oh, fuck. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like we are fucked, fucked here, right? Uh, and then I spoke to them about it, right? Uh, it was the one that went on behind the stars. And then yeah. after that, I told them to cut me out. So I'm like, for example, uh, yeah, anyway. So so the, the kind of guy Ludwig is, is he will do 200% for his team. So in Pain Gaming, the, when we played, played with Pain Gaming, he was running it because he was calling resources, but to fight like permanently, you know? Like he like lifts everyone around him and he forces his level up Because he just fuck, grinds it out and puts the work in and, and, and matches the level. You know, this is the kind of guy he is. So he went 210% and he's the reason my team isn't full of like cowards, really. And I'm like translating so I don't get cancelled here. There are many words I could have used there. <laughs> um, you know, so we actually, I actually kicked Lace, our video guy, out of that, spe out of that room when I was giving the speech in Pain Gaming. But I told him after we lost to Pain and we were, I think, fourth or fifth. I said, okay, guys, sit down. Now we can actually win. Because to be honest with you, I was really scared we can't win. Because if we are scared on stage, we can, like, there are some players that can never get over this. But after today, I realized we can win. Because all five of the players 
led by Ludwig, right? And Gigo too, but Gigo is more like a machine. This guy just sits down and he's a stage player. So Gigo doesn't yeah. really count in terms of the coward list, but the other four definitely, unfortunately. Um, you know, after Ludwig did that, we were like, how do I say this? We overcompensated, but now they know how it feels like to just fist fight. And it's okay to lose. As long as we play our game, you know? Actually, and then after that, I was like, we're going to start winning. And we did. We haven't lost since. Actually, when we lost an academy to Keith, that was one of the things that I told them. Yeah. Like, I knew that we would lose at a certain point just because of... After the second fight, the uh, blue fight, they said, okay, this, this was the first time you guys had fear on one game. Because up to yeah. now, you just stomped everyone. Yeah. And we were always in a good position. But the first time we were in a bad position, we couldn't lift like ourselves there. But okay, now... You know the feeling, don't do that again. When you get in this situation, do this, this, this. And I really think that one of the things that you did super well with Kid is that the beginning, I thought you guys would struggle more because the lineup was kind of new. And something that happens on Brazil is that when you have a like totally new squad, yeah, the first weeks are actually rough here. Yeah. That's normally happens. Yeah. And for example, Red, they had a new squad. It was yeah. actually a really similar structure to the last two years. And the players knew themselves, like Grafter just came back. Yeah. So they actually perform faster, like they, yeah. they click faster. But probably because of you guys' job, not just management, you and all the coaches, yeah. you clicked really well, really fast. Yeah. Even though you had mm -hmm. that defeat that we were talking to about. To be honest, we had a lot of battles. Like because players are not process focused, but as I said, I picked players that could be, right? Yeah. So the first two weeks was just like me versus the players fist fighting about what we need to work on and like how to build a process. Because what players will want to do is like, they'll just want to review the reason they lost, you know? Yeah, that's the So it was like me versus them for like two weeks. And then after they see like the steps. And also Gigo thought I was an imposter. Uh, initially, like before he met me, uh, initially, like before he met me, he was like, man, this guy on socials is so troll. <laughs> All the people here in Brazil think about that. It's the same thing I told you. Yeah. The thing is, like, I see that. Yeah. I don't really give a shit because I knew like when I would start working, it'd go away, you know? But Giga was like, Giga was also like not sold, you know, at the yeah, start. Yeah. So it was like a battle between me, Smiley, Giga, talk, what we need to work on, shit like this. And then we clicked because I think we sold him on a process. Uh, it was fully top down. And if, we need to have some serious conversations. Like management always had my back. It was so easy. It's so easy. Like even when we talked about the cowardice thing, you know, in, in the West, when you talk about choking, like choking is like being scared to play. Yeah, yeah. It's a Vita dog. They're so scared, <laughs> bro. Because they're so scared that if they say it, it'll be like in their minds permanently, right? But sometimes like you get an instinct and a feel for how people deal with feedback. And this team, I knew we had to say it straight away and management were like, go. And it worked like a charm. Worked like a charm instantly, you know? It was, it might've been really bad if we didn't have that, those conversations, you know? I think it worked out really well. Do you mind if I go to the bathroom? Yeah, yeah, you can go over there. It's the first one there. E agora a gente pode ligar a tecla SAP por um Meu segundo. Meu Deus, ó, eu vou Pô, dizer que eu tô... Tamo indo, tamo tamo indo. indo. Cara, eu tava... É mais cansativo. Eu obviamente. falei com o chat aqui que, tipo assim, eu juro por Deus, meu inglês é melhor do que isso. É que eu trouxe estou nervoso. Ficar não, mas já passou, falar. eu acho que o meu passou, mas o passou. O seu passou, o meu ainda, o meu ainda tá, ali porque uma... tá, pra, pra formular os verbos tá, tá pegado pra mim, eu tô tentando fazer Pô, perguntas mais, mais simples que... pra ele. Por mais que o pessoal Porque tá, tá meio pegado. Vou ser sincero, falar ao vivo também, ó, pro MD3 como podcast, a gente fazer isso, aqui eu já te digo, deu certo, deu certo, pode ser melhor, mas assim... Não, pode ser muito já, melhor. Pode já, ser muito melhor. Lógico, mas assim, abre... Eu não sou o Igor 3K. <risos> ah, não, mas é que o cara é agitado, pô. É, ele é professor de inglês. Ele, né? mas Depois abriu... de hoje, eu preciso voltar às minhas aulas de conversação mas de inglês. Abriu, tá abriu, foda. abriu a possibilidade. Agora, eu sei, por exemplo, pelo menos é, não sei, o seu é mais difícil que você é o host. Então, tipo, é pior ainda. Jesus. Mas no meu caso, eu, eu vi que eu consegui pelo menos lidar. E mentalmente, eu já vou vir pra próxima vez uhum. melhor. E eu acho que tá fluindo. A gente tá... Tendo várias perspectivas que eu nunca ouvi ele falando sobre. Então, e aí eu vi até, eu conversei com o Vex. Estava conversando com o Vex durante o programa. É. De algumas formas a gente fazer isso melhor da próxima vez. Por exemplo, ele comentou que existe um, um programa que é o que é o Microsoft Teams. 
Que aí você pode rodar a tradução dele em tempo real. Uh -huh. E a galera que estivesse querendo a tradução acompanhava por lá. A gente fazia o programa em inglês e tinha essa possibilidade do pessoal estar tendo tradução em tempo real. Entendi. Então, vamos dar uma pesquisada nisso. A próxima vez que acontecer essa situação, a gente vai estar mais preparado ainda. Mas eu acho que a gente está é, indo Eu estou bem. me cagando. Essa é a verdade. I did the exact same thing right now. Every day, I'll get some, some I room, do that sometimes in, his the, head in the no television. It happens. Right. Ele bateu a cabeça que nem eu bati. Eu acabei de bater a cabeça aqui. Literalmente agora. <coughs> Quer ler as perguntas para ah, ele? Vamos lá, vamos lá. Vamos Read some questions chats. the audience sent to you. Okay. Calma aí. Cadê os superchats? Comentários melhores. Hmm. Eu vou ler direto em inglês. É, em tá? inglês. So the first one is Michael Marques. He's one of our main supporters. He said, hi, Sil, what do you think of the memes that Brazilians make with CBLOL players? I think it's so funny. He loves it. <laughs> it's so funny. Uh, um, I think it's just, the creativity is out of the world, you know? So um, whether or not I win or lose, I can't wait for the memes of like me playing the guitar, for example. Like they will like put some like Brazilian music on top of it and it was just, just so funny. Just everything they do is so funny. Bicha yeah. seu picazi. Yeah, that, yeah, but that's like... <laughs> For me, I don't touch that topic. I think it, okay. it's sensitive, if I, sensitive. If I fuck up once, it's like really yeah, bad, yeah, you know? Yeah. <laughs> okay. um, yeah. The thing that I think that you did extremely well is that you grasped the, uh, everything about the ecosystem really well. And you kind of immersed on it. Because to grasp things that well, you had to be exposed to a lot yeah. in a short time. So that's... One big win for you. So Skitty, I yell, and uh, Hugo helped me a lot. Because I got, I got the vibe of, oh, this is Brazil, you know? And uh, there were some times I think I was really close to the line of getting cancelled. Yeah. And uh, Hugo's like, bro, it's not cool. Like six messages <laughs> me at like 11 o'clock, hey, bro. <laughs> stuff like this, it helps so much, you know? Then you get an idea of where the line is. And social media is also about virality, right? So yes. for example, like when we ran our algorithm, And we checked our PR, like the PR basically came up with the, with the formula that if I post up to 10 times a day, that was the best amount for me to grow followers. So that's also why I kind of spam too. But if you get on the line of virality, on the line, but you don't cross it and you're a gringo and you post 10 times a day, that's how you grow your socials fast. So that was our strategy. But I'm pretty sure if I didn't have Hugo, Ayel, Suskiri, like messaging me and Sig, I may have not been here, you know? There's and, a chance. <laughs> and, that, and that's, and that's a, like a subject on its own. Yeah. I, I, I heard the interview you did, I think it was my, my Sports. Yeah, it was, yeah. Because uh, you actually grasped something that's quite hard for people to understand. Yeah. The way that I conduct myself on social media and why I do that. Yeah. Because this is a struggle. If I want to grow my brand, I should, I'm not a gringo, so that part, <laughs> my bad. For that part, but I know that some things I should like show off more the things yeah. I do, and that's a struggle because I'm really bad at that because that's not something that I value that much like yeah. internally. Like I do it for the when I do something for a player and he improves, I like to cherish that for myself. Like when yeah. some those those things happen, and that's something that many people don't understand that this is a, a feeling that I like to have with yeah. me and the player. And when I saw that, I uh, actually touched the subject too about Ayo and Surskiti. You actually know that we did a uh, <laughs> reality. A reality uh, show with him, right? Yeah. Have you ever watched that? That's no, so funny. No, no, no. Do that sometime when you were in your off day. Surskiti was actually like insane. He's so funny. The... This guy's so funny. There was a scream actually that he never played Victor in his life and said, dude. I want Victor here, Joseph. <laughs> <laughs> I said, no, you ever played Victor at the time? Victor yeah. Top existed. Yeah. No, it's so strong. I can do it. And then he actually like fitted on it and said, man, I was so wrong. And the voice <laughs> and the things are super funny. And about Ayo, I worked with him. He's really good, I think. It, He's amazing. He's, He's so probably the top one wasted talent that actually went pro. Yeah, I think because, so too. Peter says the same thing. Oh, the thing is, is like, but it's because of him. He doesn't want to play. It's not just him. He, does, he him. does. He does. It's just that he makes so much money streaming. Yeah. And, okay, imagine being IL. You stream, you make a lot of money, you're handsome, and, you know, you're handsome. He's, he's quite, you know, he's very well gifted, 
you know the whole venter noise you know <laughs> this this, <laughs> this one this is kind of you don't, you yeah don't but know. you're right too you're right too, right on that too yeah i'm saying okay um you know if i'm him it's hard to come back he d he did he always says to me like he wants to play but it's so hard because he just he's so successful streaming and, and doing his thing you know so mm. But Peter always says like I would prefer IL over a lot of the players. Of in course, mm. and uh, I I had one of the best moments of my career. Not just like, not uh, specifically about the importance that everyone yeah. gives it, but for me personally, the only time I didn't watch my team playing a game in ten years was the we had that circuit town. It was academy before, but Pain got relegated. I was not at Pain at that time. Mm -hmm. And then they hired me to help bring so it. was an access tournament. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the access tournament. And I had yeah. actually one of the things that I wanted for that was I on my team. Because I said, oh, yeah, he's so good. I think that he's so good that we need to have him. And first time we tried, we made finals, but it didn't go up. Yeah. The second time, I couldn't watch, but he popped off and we had a... Like everyone popped off on the team. And the thing that makes me the saddest about, about IO is that I know what happened. Because I'm good friends with him. Yeah. And I know that sometimes, yeah, it was his fault. Like, essentially... It's not his fault. He's, he, I, essentially, I, I, his responsibility is, a, is, is of the player, like, on the matter. Yeah. He could actually behave better on yeah. all senses in many situations. But it's so unfortunate because some things happened. You probably know some of the things if he yeah, told you. Yeah, I know you. a lot, yeah. And yeah. it happened, like, twice or three times the same thing. And he couldn't... And, Ah, sometimes he couldn't understand what was going on. But if he did grasp what was going on faster, it wouldn't go to that situation. There are players in Brazil where I think if they were born in the right country, they would be yes. uh, so fucking good. He's, he's, I don't think it's, it's his fault. It's, I, I heard sometimes he don't like the, the pro player routine. He don't like yeah. the, the needs, the needs him to... What he needs to do to be a pro player. It, it's not I, don't know he, I don't know if it's because, he's real, but it's, it's what because, I've like, heard. Has so much talent, but to guide this talent in the right direction, it's not easy. It's not easy. Yeah, and I understand. Sometimes uh, he went to situations that made him <clears throat> lose all the desire to play. Yeah. I For example, when he was with INTZ and Peter and, uh -huh. and that good, the, he had one good uh, split with them. I remember because I was mm -hmm. against them, and I think I was kid at the time. Yeah. And he actually popped off with one, one BO3 with Z top. And I knew that they were giving him room to shine. Yeah. Not just like he would play tanks. Like first game he played Maokai. Yeah. It was all the hype at the time. Maokai top. Yeah. But the second game he had the situation that he could play Zed. And at that time he was having a blast, like laughing and just enjoying being a pro player. And other times in his career didn't enjoy it because probably didn't like cater him to the right way. I think if you're lucky you meet the right coaches, it's yes. good. For example, um, I think Gigo is an example, actually. Because what I realized about... Okay, the thing with everyone is they have things that make them tick. Everyone has their own reasons to play, right? Something I learned about Gigo is... He has his own DNA. There are some things that you just have to accept about him. Oh, I understand. Like, he will play behind the wave, and if he sees an angle, he will dive level three. It's like, it's like a formula. It's like a mathematical formula. You know, if I give him Olaf, he'll die in three minutes. It's like, but it, you still give it to him, you know? And then eventually he'll figure out a way and he'll like carry the game. And you know how to work with that. Yeah. Yes. But he's also very special and you have to realize when, when these things are strengths, not negatives. Okay. For me, I think it's a massive strength, but yeah, I did learn about the Giga Esmaga DNA the hard way, <laughs> you know, it was like incredible, you know? The way that he could flash under tower like that every time and die, it was really, it was really something else, you know? But then I was like, but this is special, you know? And he'll do it on stage too. That's the crazy thing. That's the crazy thing. He'll actually just do the same thing on stage. I think Ayel's like this too. Uh, you know? You're talking about a lot of things that I never talked in public because this is my view for a lot of the players yeah. that I worked with. And I, I have this feeling that when I meet this special player, yeah, that's like one of the, the biggest difference that I have with other coaches, because most of the times, if a coach wants the easy way, he will just shun the special player. Ooh. He will prefer to not adapt to the special player. So me and Giga have like, we're good friends. 
and at the end I'll at the end of the scrim I'll be like, okay, look, mate, we're not gonna play this on stage, but you can have another four or five games of it next week. <laughs> <laughs> you know and enjoy, just exactly enjoy. Exactly like that. Who? Who was who? at at the time Minerva. Who really? was exactly like that. Because yeah. when I first walk, worked with Minerva was on CNB. CNB doesn't mm-hmm. exist mm-hmm. anymore as a competitive yeah, game. Yeah. But we made finals on that. But we shouldn't make finals. Like the rogue said, yeah. the rogue thing you said, we were supposed to be ninth, tenth place. Yeah. And Minerva always wanted to play. He had something called Champion of the Week. Yeah. Like he would say, Chivana is my Champion of the Week. And, <laughs> and I will play with that and fuck yourself. And <laughs> I actually gave him one, two games. I tried to make a scenario with it. Yeah. But mm-hmm. essentially, he called me crazy because mm-hmm. I said, no, you won't play. And I actually never gave up to his teasing or his problems. Oh. But in the end, he was really special when he played. Like, if you see his stream right now, you probably don't think so. But, no, but he has good hands. Yeah. yeah. He's and, just really... And he had a really competitive mindset. He wanted to be, like, really... Yeah. He wanted to shit on the other player yeah. face. Like, every time. That's good. And that's, that's, that's something that you can exactly. teach people. Like, he really wanted to do that. And he was special at his, in his own way. And I, too, I can positively say that the two best mechanically gifted players... The first one, you know, like the, that I saw playing like physically, like behind them and watching them click. The first one is Bivoy, for sure. And you know that. Bivoy. Yeah. It, but I saw Bivoy after like, okay. when he came to Brazil. Minha vez no banheiro. And he was like insane too. at that moment. That was like the most insane mechanically gifted guy that I saw playing yeah. physically. Second one is Ayo. Like yeah. he's so good. He's so good. You too. can see that he focused too much on on the things on the small things in the game and that's why i i get so sad every time i see him yeah and like nowadays he's better like physically yeah. he's better uh wealthier yeah and every time i see him i say yeah, it's a bit ah, sad God, ah, she, but it's so, <laughs> it's so sad that he, he should be playing till now and be like the top a, player top player of the position the other one is absolute but that's a whole different thing yeah i don't know much about absolute but i did hear some stories yeah absolute is another topic but it's the same thing that it's one of hell of a gifted player and he has something that is hard to uh, hard to find that he's a natural leader mm-hmm. and has been a natural leader on all his teams mm-hmm. but he's a leader once his conditions are met um okay if his sense. conditions aren't met it's really hard for example uh, when we had the Flamengo team with Lucy and two Koreans and mm-hmm. Stardust, his conditions weren't met. So he couldn't be a leader. Uh, uh, Smiley, I think everyone is a bit like that, though. Even that all natural leaders, like, for example, Smiley yeah. is a bit like that. Like, if he, he has very high EQ, yeah, uh, higher than mine for sure. So if the mood is bad, like, if the mood is really bad and everyone doesn't want to play and not want motivated, he also, like, he it's levels like a, down. Levels down. But if the mood is good, then he's like a monster uh yes it, it, one of my yeah. speeches of him was exactly like that like every day like come on absolutely i need you to yeah. do your thing I said oh, oh man i can't do it this that, is that like- is a hard part about coaching though you, when you like for example want to let someone in everyone has to be on board or it's hard so for example like when giga locks in erlaf everyone's like oh, and then they just play <sighs> you go know? again yeah <laughs> and then we just play you know but it's like uh it, Everyone understands that he's fucking good at what he does, and that that part I think is really important. Okay, that's the the I O love part is yeah. <laughs> I really love the guy. So the next one is from Luan Borges. Uh, he said, "Hi, Sue. In your opinion, what uh, what makes Zeus uh, top laner that's so above the others? The disparity is so big. Is he a two point zero gigo? Great hug." Zeus is a 2.0 Giga. Yeah, he's saying that. I don't know. Yeah. He's literally he's translated what Giga. he's saying. I think uh, Giga is a 2.0 Zeus. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think <laughs> that was the, the joke. That <laughs> this is true love, Giga. Uh, um, yeah, I think Zeus is just one of those players that went through the whole like system. Uh, <laughs> and he was groomed for a very long time. That's why when I look at the East and I look at the West, sometimes I'm like, oh, fuck, how the fuck do we beat them? Because it's like, 14, 15 year old cracked kids that are just like better than 80% of the LEC players. It's like, what the fuck do you do? You know, like they're just in, a, in the ecosystem from a young age. They're like robots that are just designed to play a league. He just, I think Zeus is the best top laner to have ever played the game. 
Whoa. Just the way that he clicks and the way that he moves, he's so fucking good. It's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, I've heard some things about multiple accounts on people that played against him. That it's, it's a different rough. it's different, a different situation. That his attention to detail, like for me, like even when I see Ben, I think he's just really fucking good. But I'm like, okay, like there's a world where you can beat this guy. I see Zeus and it's just like, okay, play both side. And the thing is that about his career too, entering like really young, but yeah. having like the hardships that he had. Yeah. Even recently, like losing first and having everyone blame him. And there's actually a LCK final, I think it's like from the second split last year. I don't know if the second or the first split yeah. that he's playing Jace against Gragas. Yeah. And it was just unlucky first game and everything yeah. turned wrong for him, even though he was that good. And then he stands up, gets words. Exactly. It's totally differential because people say, oh, he can play Yon. It's not about... <clears throat> him playing Yon. The entire package yeah, exactly. makes him able to play Yon. I actually want to talk about that because I think, for example, like, I think his DNA is different. For sure, he's like yes. so fucking otherworldly talented, but at the same time, it's a structure behind him, right? So something, for example, where I might have a different opinion to you in, in for example, is that what allows that to happen is like the coaching stuff, the, the yes. environment, the whole structure. And in Korea, did you know like head coaches are more like me? Like, they don't do the media stuff, but a head coach's job in Korea is to actually get like sponsorships and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah I heard about that. So it's like really different. Mm -hmm. It's really different, yeah. Um, same for China. It's management, right? Yeah, it's man. It's GM. It's a GM role in uh, in traditional sports. And then the, they have a lot of emphasis on positional coaches. They're all like ex-pro. He went through the whole system and he knows like, and it just gave me a perfect environment, especially playing with like Faker and stuff. Where I think he'll be the next franchise player, right? But yeah, I do think that uh, the the understanding of what or the depth of each role in Korea, for example, is what and the ecosystem and the in, what, what do you call that? Like the infrastructure, yeah. the internet, everything is what allowed a monster like that to be born. And that's kind of really what we're trying to do at Cade over the next five years. Mm -hmm. um, like for example, like here when I come here, right? I'm not just coming to chat with you because I I mean I do like you a lot and I enjoy the podcast, but it's also because like for example this jersey, right? Yeah. If you use code technology code technologia and you get ten percent off. <laughs> That's Vex being happy right now. Ten percent off. Vex, why you you don't send the I mean he used to send us. It's great. God damn. Yeah. And by the way, but Vex, you need anyway. to send and, me and, one jersey. Have you went to the, like the, okay? the sales moment? No, no, no. I'm not done yet. Just ha Okay. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. But by the way, merchandise key is legendary for merchandise. I still have yeah. the the hoodies from the past. But they were if you bring back the the hoodies that from from the the back, do you remember the yellow oh. one? Ah, the yellow one. They're the the pink one. Amazing. Just yeah. bring the old patterns. You're gonna sell a lot, Vex. What, what you what you're seeing right now is we're trying to poach uh, Joker from Pen Gaming. So anyway, uh, we can maybe organize this merch merchandise for you. You know, um, that aside, like the point I'm trying to make is like, for example, when I'm here, I'm not just here to do that. I'm also thinking about sales. If I can sell more jerseys, then I can give my players better salaries. Yes. It's like this, you know? Yeah. And we had the best sales day ever today. We had the best sales month, I think last month. You know, it, it it's a part of the package. And when you get the, the all those little like infrastructure and those little parts, Everyone gets then happy. you get Zeus, yeah. you know? It's not like a appeared out of nowhere, you know? Like if Ayel grew up in Korea, maybe he would have been one of the greats. You know, you never yes. know. This is the sad part. You want to change the way the teams here in Brazil see the coaching staff because today we have one, two, three coaching staff in all. I don't think it's possible. You don't think it is possible? I think in, in the West, no one's like this. Why? I think I'm different because I think I, I'm from a business background. I think that's why. But like, the teams can ch can't change? I don't think they have the knowledge. Like, there's no way. For example, um, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's not like this. I think most teams just think of head coaches like the guy that teaches the game, you know? Yeah, yeah. But the way I exactly think of head coach is like a delegator. Yes. Like one of my goals is like, people ask what Lifeania does, right? That's like a common question. Yeah. He's learning. He's, he's positional. He does a lot of the number stuff. He's like really good with items, stuff like that. But he's learning. <clears> because <throat> to be honest with you, and I'll be completely honest, Luke's and Mitohara are way better than Lifeania Bill right now. That's my honest opinion, right? Because Bill only got promoted to coach like last month. So he's still learning the game. And by the way, I think this guy's a genius, but I'll talk about that later. 
And Lyphania came from LPLL, which is like a lower ERL, you know? So the level is not... Not there. matched. Yeah. But we're training them because for me, I want to be able to delegate these tasks and not work 16 hours a day. Because I'm also like an athlete, you know? I have to also be able to yeah. perform. So like, um, basically, yeah, to train Zeus, you need the whole ecosystem. That's really what we're trying to do at Kate. And uh, I think it's a very, very ex exciting... So, uh, we see a lot of that in the NFL. We have the head coach and we have the offensive coach, the defensive yeah, coach, exactly. the special team coach. And when you're in football, there's like 50 coaches. Yeah. And you're but for that, first, you need to have an organization that values that. Exactly, yeah. And you do have. And most, I'm being sincere in Brazil, in the end, most don't value that much. They give a certain value. Yeah. But if they can choose <clears throat> between like other things and weight things, Normally, it waits not in favor of coaching staff. Like, yeah. normally, they want to have a big name. If they have that big name, they're okay. Like, they don't need to structure or develop something. That's also how they raise revenue. Like, if they have a big name, then they can sell more jerseys yes. and whatnot, yes. right? But the way yeah, I see sure. th that's why I was like, I need to build my brand too, you know? Like, that, that's like one of the thought processes. Because if, if I have a big brand and I can help, then it aligns closer to what the East is doing and what traditional sports is doing, like in baseball and football and rugby. It's all the same, you know? That's like what I'm trying to aim to do. And what Cade wrote in the letter of intent was not head coach. What they actually wrote is, we're hereby informing you that we're interested in hiring coach Christopher C. L. Lee as a head coach of the CBLO division with the intention to move him as head of coaching staff for all modalities. So for example, I worked on the 16 page methodology can't talk about the details. I helped uh, Honor of Kings with their coaching lineup and I built, built a document there. It's like, that's the vision. And Kate is partnering with my company, Savvy Corps, for three years as a jersey sponsor. We're like in the middle of writing a contract. All these things, it's like business and we're, we want to raise the revenue and we want to raise equity. So if you're like Corsair, for example, and you want to contact me, you call me. And the, the point I'm trying to make is like, if you are smarter with the business side as a head coach and you're able to raise revenue and you think more long-term, then the play, the people that benefit the most are who? The players. Yes. Right? Yeah. And the organization. That's, yes. that, that's Mostly, what, most, most coaches don't think about that. Yeah. And it's something that, I can talk about that. I think it's yeah. not that bad. Yeah. You talked about One Earth Kings and have you watched, first, just, just for fun, have you watched the match of One Earth Kings? Of course. I was a coach for one of Kings. Like I got third place on the beginning of the season. Yeah. Before like yeah. last year, before coming to, to Peng. Such a crazy game, right? Yeah. Like no tempo. Yeah. You just. And no basing. It's just. <laughs> it's an amazing game. Yeah. Uh, but that's just a joke. The, the main thing is that before one of Kings, we had wide rift. I was on that because I thought it was a really good opportunity before it broke. Yeah. And at, just before, like one month before the game exploded, Kid tried to hire me. I spoke with Duki for uh, Wide Rift. And something that he told me that resonates with everything you said, that I said, well, you do know that if you hire me, I have a lot of other stuff that I need to do. Yeah. Like podcast, videos, yeah. Twitch. He said, no, I want you to keep doing that. Yeah. And when I he said that, I mean, if Wide Rift would continue, there's a good chance that I would highly consider Kid to go. I mean, to be, to be he clear. Had, Sorry. Clear vision of that. To, to be clear, though, Edu is not actually the big boss right now. Yeah, but yeah, at yeah, that right. time he was. At that yeah. time he was. Okay, okay. I mean, like Edu... it was like one year ago, okay, before okay. Vax, before Pedro, before Pedro. It was the time that Kid kind of got back, you know. Okay. I, I, uh, because Kid joined Star, Star, Star Horizon, Star Horizon. Yeah. and then I, mean, Pedro I don't want to. I don't want to discredit Edu too, because like for example, he interviewed me. He was part of the process. But yeah. the the main two business leaders right now are Pedro, who's like a businessman. Yeah. I think he has a helicopter, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> and he looks very handsome every day. And, you know, uh, I love you, Pedro. And then there's Vex, <laughs> who's a CEO. And then Edgy's more like... He didn't say Vex for handsome. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best way he, he, uh, he, to, <laughs> he can get a rise in next year. Vex is very handsome. Very okay. Handsome. <laughs> <sighs> I mean, you really have to call me out like that. That was so funny. No, but like, it's yeah, it, it, is, Vex, yeah, it too, is a bit so. different. It is a bit different from what it used to be, but they're, they're the ones that, that are leading it. And then it's like Edu's kind of <coughs> observing and like assisting and stuff like this. Yeah, it's a I, bit different. I mean, uh, I know Edu for some time because 
when I was there at Kid, he was uh, things were different. Like yeah. esports as a whole were yeah. different. But he has one of the first teams in the Brazil. Yeah, yeah. He's, 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 he's incredible. Teams. So, for example, when I went to that party, you know, uh, with. Bayano. Bayano. Yeah, yeah, and we were like doing the networking thing. I was talking ah, to him. I had to skip that because I had that. It was good. It was it good. It was a great party. Um, I had to leave. Uh, you left earlier, I yeah, think, and then I, I left, left a bit after you. Uh, you know, he's so knowledgeable about like life, I think, just from yes. living in esports. So what Edgy helped me with, for example, he said like, <clears throat> uh, I almost died overworking. That's what he said. And he like gave me the story and he like messages me and he, he says like, don't call me boss just call me like young which is like older brother and he he says let's go get dinner sometime he, he's kind of that kind of guy you know he's for me at the moment sincerely he's one of the most amazing guys i had worked with yeah. in esports and even though his version back on the day was a bit rougher than it's but, much better now than yeah, yeah, but like, the past, even when he was on the rougher edge you can see there was intention, you know? But I will say, I don't think Edu is what Hugo and Pedrano. They're, yeah. they're straight up business people. Yeah. Like, for it's example, uh, one, just <laughs> so you can know, I already told that on, on podcast a long time ago, but <clears throat> he was really close to the lineup when yeah. we were there. That's the difference they as well. They kick the coats. Not just <laughs> kicking the coats, but like, there's one split that we were like finalists, then we were, one rift rivals and then we went to the second split and that split was the one that team won with absolute one and they were like massive underdogs okay. they went from uh the second division yeah like from split one to two and then they just swept the league and won by coincidence our first game of the second split was against them yeah and no one knew that they would win the split yeah. at the first game yeah but they were already very good Really, yeah. and we didn't know because we didn't it's train funny. against them because they yeah, were the first matches. Yeah. Yeah, then, division. and we were like finalists, so we were favorites. Yeah, and we got really shit on. <laughs> and then, <laughs> when we went, uh, <laughs> we just lost the match. And then, when we go out, there's Edo wa waiting there on the on the street because it was on the old studio. You studio said, "Okay, guys, get her here." And he looked at everyone and said, okay, this is the most shameful you'll be in your career till now and probably in the future. <laughs> you guys, please cherish this. And he was talking like really serious. Like you will never be shamed like this in your lives. And we continue on the, the gaming house. <clears throat> yeah. Just go to the trip knowing that this is so shameful. And then everyone was like, oh shit. <laughs> the bad part came after. Really? Yes. After, this is not, this the, bad is not the bad part. The bad part was like talking to each one oh, on edgy. the front of everyone. Oh, so edgy. I he don't was, know about this he one. He was rough. <laughs> he was rough. <laughs> everyone was afraid of him, you know? His best is, is, is something but, special. But he did that because he really loved the game and he really loved to win. Yeah, but you and can't do everyone, this. Yeah, I know. It was like can't do beginning really of the esports. I'm not romantizing it. Did they, they, they do us today? Is an angel. It do, it do, it do it's an such angel. an angel to me. I'm so surprised today. Today, it was an angel. The past, it was a, the greatest death but of all time. <laughs> but everyone respected him because yeah. they, they knew that deep inside he would care about everyone. And even yeah. though he was a devil most of the time, he would do right. the same things like, let's go yeah, out, yeah. let's go eat, don't call me boss. Th these kind of things he would do too. And yeah. now he's like the better version of himself. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. Next, Next one? question. Yeah, we have a well, lot. I mean, I, I think I'm uh, one of the big reasons I came here was because of management. Because I think I learned a lot about life from Edu, and I learned a lot about business and how to like create successful organizations with Hugo and and Pedro. Yeah, Hugo, and the, Hugo. You, to pay to buy this is like you need to go to like business school. You know, I don't know Pedro too much. He's really good. He's really. No, I, I imagine good. because of what I'm seeing, but yeah. Vex is amazing. Like amazing. They're both really good. Really <clears throat> um, Girosha said, Chappy, please don't translate. We can add uh, subtitles later. Okay. That's what we are doing. Leonardo Half said, ah, same thing. Okay. We can keep we translating riffing. the subtitles later. And this one is actually a question from Lucas Greco. Sue, so, you are <laughs> CB Law's Ted Lasso. Thank you for turning the, the <laughs> tournament in the most interesting in all the aspects. Congratulations for Behind the Stars. Chappy, show Seven Kings to see you. <laughs> they are taking him to Habibis. No offense about that. So, so <laughs> actually a lot to unpack. 
It's so bad. <laughs> bad? So, what is bad? Habibis. Y- you eat for Habibis? Is for real? Oh, yeah. They took him to Habibis. Bro, it was so Who bad. Who did that to Sunday, you? Sunday, right? They took yeah, you there. Yeah, yeah. We went there and it's so bad. I got happen and it was so bad. They did it. They, they told you what you're getting into? Yeah, no, they, they said it's so fucking good, man. No. And no, because like, there's, there's, there's a background to that. Okay, it was. It was they told you the background, or they didn't. They just no. That's why, right. it's because uh, Habib is something I don't know for you because you are from another like Brazil is extremely big. Habib is present everywhere. Yeah, but for especially for my family, when we were like poorer, yeah, Habib was something that. Oh, I did hear this. Yeah, yes, I did hear this because it was the 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 place that in people on chat probably. Can resonate to that. Yeah. It was the place that you would go with your family if you couldn't afford much, but it was going out the same. And you eat as much as you want. And it's like yeah, emotional. Yeah, yeah. Like you Yeah. I, I, we know that the food is not that good, but yeah. it resonates. Uh, Zero knows it, right? <laughs> like it's what we had. Like he he actually the, the operator just Why is he laughing? It's because it's true. He knows that. Because Habib is, is a, yeah. I don't know. It's not it's not okay, that but, but, anything, okay but. thing is like for example, it, the food in the past. You would buy like thousands of isfihas, the thing you ate probably, yeah. from like under one hill. It's yeah. 29 cents in the yeah. beginning. But the, the, the meat is like good, but the chicken one is so f- bad, bro. Yeah. I only the, eat the, the chicken the, one, the cheese the, one. The, 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 the spinach. Oh I only eat the cheese one. The other ones I can't eat. Here's a question, right? For the chocolate one, why do they. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much chocolate, bro. Like I had one, and I thought I got diabetes. <laughs> I, st- I still feel guilty. I still feel guilty. I haven't had anything to eat today, actually. But think about it. there are some secret stuff there. Like if you order the right things, the right things are good. For example, pastel de Belém is good. Like you're not doing the Portuguese one, but it's one of the best desserts. It's not like yeah, this is fear not not that bad. And the and Prieto. Actually, if I speak no, but something I, about Habibs, I will close the door for no, some. What, what I did say was for 35 reais, I would go again. If I was an academy coach <clears> and <throat> I didn't have much money, I would go there. I'd go there for sure. Yes. But oh, I, I love the Sfiha de Queijo. Cheese is Sfiha from Habibs. I love yeah, it's that the one. one. It's the best one. It's the best one. The ricotta one. The kibi. The kibi is okay too. The thing is, I, I, I need to like look after my health, you know? Yeah, so yeah. It's mm-hmm. so bad for you. It's just like bread and... It's just carbs, dude. It's carbs and sugar. It's but so like bad. I told you, it has something going on about the... Like the emotional <laughs> nostalgia. And, yes, the nostalgia. Yeah. But the guy that was supposed to be here and couldn't come today, the, the Prieto, he's like one of your best friends and one of the hosts. He mm-hmm. actually owns a... Burger house. A burger house, but like it's, it's a, the best one in yeah, the, the best world. One in yeah. Brazil, Seriously. Yes. Are you taking that after We're not, we're not like hyping it up. It's actually the best one. Is it still open? I'm hungry. I haven't had anything to eat today. Today is not open. Uh, uh, the only day he doesn't open is it's Mondays. 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 Yeah. But actually, it's actually insane. Like if you Prieto, can... manda para ele na cage. He will send you in cage tomorrow. If Probably you, know. you won't eat a burger like that in is your that life. Good? I'm not. I'm, it's I'm not joking. It's amazing. But I, I really like smashed thin burgers. Is it they thick? have smashed. They have, yeah, smashed they have, they have the, the, the thicker one burgers. and smashed burgers. It's too. because. They used to have just one in mm-hmm. Santos. Santos, I don't know if you're. Yeah, I know Santos. I know Santos. Yeah. It's a so, not very good football team. Actually, too, and he actually cheers for the team. Ah. Yeah. Uh, historically, it's not that bad, but nowadays, and people will go from <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> so Skitty bought me, a, won me over. He gave me a free jersey. He gave me a, the Campion 2022 jersey, and from then I'm sold. Okay. R- Rubos Negro? Rubos Negro. Yes. Yeah, uh, it's because <laughs> I was Flamingo coach for some time. <laughs> Actually, that's, that's a really funny one. I don't know if you did know that. But they did was not. Flamingo coach and then they suddenly promoted me without my consent to CEO. That oh. was an amazing year. It was the pandemic year. But isn't, isn't Santos the team that got relegated recently? Yeah, yeah. Yes, but like Santos historically is a good team. Uh, yeah. It's the first time they got relegated. Yeah. It's the first time in the history. history. And they had like Really good players, for example, Pele was from Santos. Like, really, yes. Neymar, from from Santos. Santos. Neymar was from Santos. Yeah. They are known to be to breed excellent talent. In what the happened? past, <laughs> things happen. <laughs> <laughs> the, okay, A lot F- of things. F- happen. FYI, jokes aside, I don't actually watch football. I don't have time, uh, so I don't even follow football. 
but it's just cool to be a part of the the thing you know yeah you it's, should uh, you should like get someone better than me or Sheppy, someone that actually knows the business part because what's going on in brazil right now is really interesting from the business uh, perspective because <clears throat> even though we don't have franchise here mm -hmm. people can still get relegated and they do and some teams get <laughs> relegated <laughs> multiple times but the way that they doing stuff things like uh they're doing some company junctions and yeah some things business wise for example palmeiras is one of the teams that i'd love to it's like prospering in that sense the business part is really interesting i'd right love now. to learn that i'd love to learn. something that i'll do in my i'm not the best guy the best guy to tell you, tell you that but yeah. even i that i'm not a specialist i think that it's is, amazing is it, is it like image rights or do you know like it's it, image it, rights too but for example our entire esports system is based on one law that is from football like yeah. we kind of adapted it and The way they're doing it is they have something <coughs> called SAF, and SAF is like taking over teams. It's like a, a company that's taking over teams. Yeah. It's a bit more complex than that, but we have like some figures going on. For example, you know Ronaldo probably. Yeah, yeah. He actually bought a team. Really? Like the Cruzeiro team. They actually the team that I cheered when I was a kid and got relegated and got it back to the first division. Yeah. And the stories behind those teams and the way that they deal with Business-wise, it's really interesting. Yeah. I'm I, not the I, best I wanna, guy to tell you. I want to travel. Uh, I don't know if I ever get time off, but if I do, I want to travel around Brazil, just like with a backpack and just go. Be careful, and be careful my friend. Yeah, yeah I'll go okay. with someone maybe. I don't know. Yes, you uh, need to go with someone. I, I want to I wanna visit the football. I've never watched a football game before. I bet you should do. Seriously. You know, there's Palmeiras Stadium here, I heard. It's very big. I yeah. want to watch one. I've never watched. Dude, I've only worked since I was 17. I haven't had a holiday since I was. I haven't uh, had a holiday in 10 one years. One football game, oh. you should really go for w one match. Yeah. After the good. podcast, we're going to eat some real good sushi. Let's go. Let's, Let's go, go eat some more makase. I, I haven't had anything all day. So I'm you down. don't eat anything yeah. all day. Because I had. You want us to, to order something? No, 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 you no want let's to go together. Because okay. I went to Habibi's, and this is not a joke. <laughs> and this morning, it was. I felt so shit. And I couldn't go to gym either because gyms are closed for some. This. Gym okay, think, okay, let me talk. I want to vent, vent about Brazil. I love Brazil, okay? Okay. There's only one thing that saves Brazil <clears throat> the people. The people are warm, yes. and there's something about Brazil. Thank you very much. There's something about Brazil that just like, touches me because it reminds me of when I was younger. Everyone's full of hope, and everyone wants a better future, and they just want to live a better life. Yeah. Right? But I'm not shit talking Brazil. I'm just talking facts here. First of all, when it rains, Nothing works. Yeah. What's up with this? Nothing works. Okay, the fucking roads flood. The traffic lights stop working. For some reason, the road is a river. Bro, I'm walking out of my the office and the side of the road is like a waterfall. Like, and then the roofs collapse. The electricity turns off. It's like... Literally, the roof collapsed yes. in the kitty. And the water, the water tap randomly stops working. And I asked them, like, it was a summer day. It wasn't even raining. I was like, hey... Why is the tap not working? And I said, oh, the, the city runs out of water sometimes. I'm like, what? The city runs out of water? Yeah. I am mind blown. What the? And the internet? Oh my and Lord. And what if it. I told you that you were just like grasping the tip of it? Yeah. Because we have had years that literally chaos happened. In, in this lost, one is a, we, actually okay. In the office, we have like optic thing because we're Viva, right? So yeah. we're fine. Go Viva. Viva Brazil is the best. <laughs> um, but the moment we leave, I leave the office and I go like, I don't know, to a restaurant or somewhere and the Wi-Fi, it's like five megabyte per second. It's like so slow. It's so slow. They must not be with Viva. It must, they must not be with Viva. <laughs> But let's, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead. Yeah. So, okay, we had the Habibis crash course. Anyway. Um, Pedro Correa said, good night, coach. See you. I am a pain fan, but besides pain, the only thing that I wouldn't stay mad if I if won. The civil law is kid because of your work. I uh, hope a final between pain, pain and kid. Good luck on that. Right. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, you actually had quite a... A lot of fans here in Brazil. No, no, I, I wouldn't say that. I said quite a happy chat with Mitas, the dog. Ah, the dog. Uh, yeah, dog. he loves you. Yeah, when when he 
was not announced to one kid. I'll be the biggest. The dog tried regret. too much to get him. And he will what? talk to me. I, yeah. I'm curious though. Why did Thomas Hammonds not reach out? Do you know? I can't tell you that after I mean, I'm very, I'm very. <laughs> is it, is it was I'm, his job. Is it because I'm not media safe? I can tell you after. I think it is, boys. I won't tell him, okay? <laughs> okay, okay it's just a joke. Okay. I won't tell no, him. No, he'll tell you everything. I will tell him. Let's, let's be real. Vex is a genius because if I am hiring someone, I would not hire me. <laughs> if I if I see my socials, I'll be like, what is this guy doing? Why you choose that approach in your socials? Oh, because the first one. vision, the first impression we have of you is what the hell is going on? This guy no, is but not crazy. everyone thinks that. That's the thing. And the thing is, I, I knew I would have some offers. I knew I'd have some offers. It's just about like, for me, Brazil was like, okay, if I get a good offer, I go. If it's a really good offer, if I don't, it's fine. I have other offers. So uh, let, you already had a lot of offers. Of course. Mm. Of course. Yeah. So it's like, oh yeah, like, fuck it. You know, if, if there's a cool offer in Brazil, I'll go. If there's not, then uh, I've grown my fan base 3x. It's fine. But you don't have the, the, the fear to be misunderstanding I mean, here I, in Brazil. We did, some, we did some research before and I just made sure to not cross some lines. Okay. And I knew that my work would speak for itself and it, it didn't really matter, you know? So. Okay. We can talk later about the past. <laughs> Davi, Davi Almeida said, Ah, Thomas Hammond. This, <laughs> he, he is such a joy. He is, is such he? a joy. I don't know. I like Vex. Mm. CEO Gap. You can imagine. <laughs> ask, ask, ask Vex oh about God. him. Ask Vex about Rulada. him. They, was, they used to work together. <coughs> ah, really? Yes, on pain. Mm. Mm. Ask Vex about him. He's gonna, yeah. gonna, gonna like the talks. Like the past, the past of the scenario is so funny. Did he just get like traumatized by gringos? Is that what happened? Mm, is that what you're telling me? It's a bit deeper than that. Okay. Uh, but I, I think a wait. lot of Brazilians are traumatized by gringos. Yes. Yeah. You know, like so many people are worried about, you know, S tourism here, like with foreigners as well. I don't know what kind of people visit this country, it's because, but it's, it's <laughs> bizarre. It, it's because it happens it happened too much like yeah just, there's the famous story and it's not that long ago yeah that a coach would smuggle girls in the the, the gaming office like yeah. away from player view like he asked for imagine like there there was like the office the door and he asked for the room that was near the door with a window that you could like actually climb so he can like climb Is it pro the team huh? pro team in league of legends yes how in, many years ago uh, two years. Can you drop a name? Uh, no, no. Two years ago, I think. Two years ago. So you know of it? Yeah. yeah. yeah it's a lot of people don't know about that. It's because, a foreigner. Yes, that's why I'm telling you that. Bizarre. And like, they took some time to find out because he was really like he would wait like, like in the two a.m. two a.m. so no one could see, and then he would smuggle by the window, and then they would go back. But why doesn't he just Uber out? And you know, if he's no, because be like, he didn't want the players to see. Ah, because he would be a, like a bad example for them. That's crazy, though. Yeah, crazy. this is one of the many things that happen. I here. think the biggest enemy of <clears throat> men is down there. Then you need to think with your brain, guys. Okay, yes. this is why I actually have a lot of female friends because I think men are dumb, not to be <laughs> sexist. But females, women are way smarter than us. Yeah, the way they're hard, I way agree. Smarter. I they're agree. way well, smarter I than us. I agree. They're a lot. so much more socially aware. They have way higher EQ. They don't think with their dicks. Can I say that? Can I get cancelled? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's okay. It's fucking hell. Like, it's good. Y you should. Yeah. Davi Almeida said, "This is all that was left after the two headphones." There is a context on that, right? Okay. And uh, this is a joke. A joke about behind the stars, I think, or the the. I think is that. Yeah, yeah. Because he, the, the buying your headphones, your your merchandising is going very well for really <laughs> yes it's Thank the you. best merchandise in civil law really really you think so <laughs> you at the moment the free, yes. the refrigerator and some yeah. at the moment i think so i think uh, because it it comes i think that the the best things that pop off that organically yeah. the things that pop off organically are the best on that sense yeah and it starts normally as a joke yeah for example uh you know brtt for sure and at the beginning, he was called a uh, cap seller, like the cap seller. And that was something that was negative and people would joke a lot. Actually, now he owns one of the 
biggest brands on skateboard yeah. on Brazil. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> maybe some, thi some things that yeah. start as jokes organically. But like, grew. My, my nickname, I still don't understand where it came from. Ah, the Fokker thing? No, the other one. <laughs> yeah, the ah, sex yeah, 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 the sex one. Sex -er. yeah. But I didn't do anything. Dude. But you did say. I don't I did remember. say, but I, it was someone else that started it. That's the thing. You're not the one who started no, this? No, it was Twitch chat. But it looked like. No, 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 no. It's because no, your just, name. Like the, the it's not because your name. Is See, no, like to, be fair, to be fair, I did stream a lot before I posted that for the first time. And a lot of people saw it on Twitter. But I was just chilling. And then this guy was like, this guy's a king of sex. And I'm like, what? And then everyone started just calling me hater sex. And then it, it started from, <laughs> now he's laughing. It started from, you know, the Homer Simpson emoji. Yeah. The I Homer thought Simpson. it was so funny. I thought the emoji mm. was so funny, mm. you know? Cause it's like, mm. it's just, it's just funny. The emoji is so mm. funny. The magic, Brazilian magic. Yeah. But then everyone just started calling me that. And then now it's like stuck and I can't get rid of it. So I've just embraced it, you know? Actually, everything you post, like you post the yeah, last one. Yeah, but I one. do that on purpose now. It's like, <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> but now, now I like embraced it. But initially I was like, huh? What, what, like what's happening? Cause I am the opposite. Like in every way in person, I'm like really conservative. Like I never go out. I don't drink by the way. I drink like once a year, like twice a year. I don't do anything, you know? Like when people mention, for example, I don't know if I'm allowed to say Augusta. I would not go there with like a fucking, like, I would stay 20 kilometers away from there, you know? But... I'm suddenly a hater sexer and I'm like, okay. <laughs> and now I'm, okay, now I'm the king of sex. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, okay, okay, okay cool, you know? Like, <laughs> you know? No, but it's working. Thing, 20 the next one, one, 50 reais. Okay. Whoa, thank oh. you very much. We Ricardo are rich right now. Carvalho, olha que horrible. Ricardo like, Rocha Carvalho. Oh. The name, the name in, some names in English just sound awful. Yeah. Like Ricardo Rocha Carvalho, Ricardo da Rocha Carvalho. Carvalho no? But thank you very much. Like, good evening to all questions to Doc and, Doc and see you, as I have been a fan of both for a long time. I just started coaching on the university team, and I I am a bit, a bit, uh, some uh, kind of loss to where to go for content. Usually it's focused on players and Elo, not on the staff. Oh, true. That, I, I, know some, I know a really, really good content place. Uh, Joko has a good YouTube channel. 200, 200 something thousand subscribers. Yeah. yeah. I try to watch a bit when I can. Um, and then obviously <clears throat> Viva Cade Stars. Uh, Behind the Stars is unironically, and I'm not just promoting it for the sake of it. It's unironically like a good way to see how I work, I think. And then I have my channel at CLBR too. But the, it's good. The thing that serious scene behind the stars in the social media is, is, a, is a character or is the real you? But when I'm giving feedback, it's real. Like I don't, I don't think about the camera at all because yeah. I've been in situations where I did content. But w what the, the, the character is like when I know I need to sell something or when I'm just joking okay. and, the, you know, like certain parts is obviously a character, but in general... Um, it's it's pretty real. But just yeah. uh, a heads up for him because the way that he stated the question. Yeah. I mean, if you want to go for content, sure, like Sue is amazing on what he said. But uh, some some expert players on Brazil are making an excellent job. I think Tucker is making an excellent Talkers, job. Revolter yes. is making an excellent job. The way that they're presenting Tucker's especially. I am watching his stream like much more. I he's always so watch good. because I used to play with him. So <coughs> he's really good. He's a good acquaintance. But mm -hmm. nowadays he's doing like an excellent job. You should focus Personally, on that. I think it's the best right now. Yes. I think Tokas is the best. Right That's now. why he's the most accurate. Highlighting him. He's amazing. Hivalta sometimes gets lazy, but <coughs> it's true. Like he's sometimes good. he's good though. He's, he's had a lot of jobs. But sometimes <laughs> like he, he's had a lot of jobs too. Sometimes he, he's lazy, the lazy is not the word, but sometimes he gets like too funny on stuff yeah. oh, okay. and wants to make content because he's having a blast doing it. But Tucker is extremely technical and yeah. I think it's a good way to start and go for traditional esports too because some of the things you won't learn from <coughs> League of Legends. Yeah. And you can learn from traditional codes, football codes, uh, like like you said, you had like uh, what was the coach on Europe that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Rob Davies was really Rob good. Davis. Now he works for Wales uh, national rugby team. Yes, or something. you can learn so much from yeah. traditional sports too. So, yeah. oh, I would actually, um, actually, I, I take it back because when you look at CLBR, <coughs> ah, oh, you have water here. Yeah, I, I just, okay. I've been sick this week, so apologies. Mm. Um, to be honest, a lot of the content I did there was uh. It was for stream, so it's not real coaching. Because uh, I'm trying to be funny, you know. But if you actually want to learn for real, like, Tokers is 
Pockers, I really highly, 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 highly recommend. He's very, very good at what he does. And one other thing. Yeah. Now for an... Uh, Personal standpoint, uh, if you're gonna help a university team, you are doing like T4, like not T3, T4, yeah. T4. And actually, when you go in those, those specific scenarios, what I would advise you is doing what's best for the players. Because sometimes we will want to be something that actually is not close to our reality. Like yeah. if you try to emulate some Challenger series, I mean, it's academy, right? Academy, you're a CBLO coach and you are a university. Yeah. Maybe the things you need to succeed are like much yes. simpler. So yes. just focus on the simple things. If you can actually help them thrive, that's okay. If you don't need to be it, like... Exactly. It's just like when things get complex, it's the most simple yeah. answer, you know? Yes. Like if you're in university too, he's probably like good with research, right? Yes. So even going on like Google Scholar and just typing in uh things about performance and just yes. questions that you have you'll find good articles that's kind of how i started so you just go on google scholar and i just read a bunch of articles and there's also a really good book um called atomic habits it's a very very yeah, simple book a helps book. a lot uh there was one more guy it was a it was a rugby 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 coach i forgot the name anyway there are a lot the of the guy from books. the rings the the rings guy <sighs> I, I, I can't for some reason i can't remember the book but anyway Atomic Habits. The Atomic Habits Hello. is a really good one. Yeah. It's going to have big Asta. Next one. Giovanni, Giam Gi Giovanni Giamantino. It's hard when we when when translate the games. Giovanni Giamantino said, Hello, Sil. I love you. I am a loud fan, and I would love to see you training Robo, because for me, he's the best top player in Brazil, but have a lot of silly mistakes. What do you think about Robo and team? I love them too. Okay. Do you want, me, do you want my honest opinion? Yes. Yeah. Thing is, on public social media, people think I call Robo bad. Because to be honest, like, I think compared to fucking Zeus, he is bad. Like, no, no, no offense. Anyone compared to Zeus is bad. I, like, I don't think that it's close. But <clears throat> he's a good player. He's a really good player. Like, that's just straight up honest. And in Brazil, he's the guy to beat. That's my honest opinion. Um, like they only caught me when I was analyzing for Worlds, which is like a very small sample size, but you, you'll realize it, especially like when I watch the scrims, I realize it more. He's really smart about the way that he uses jungle and like just the way he sets up waves. He's not the best mechanically and he's also not the best with like trading patterns, but he's the guy to beat in, in, in Brazil. Like if he can beat Robo, then you're in a really good spot. And it's not just that, like what I noticed with him is I'm sure that he's also shot calling as well with the map movement. He's getting a bunch of free wins because he knows how to like play the map. The controversy about him is you said about DNA. There are some stuff that are in his DNA too. For sure. And he robs, right? Yes. Yeah. That's the, the robs thing is in his, <laughs> his DNA. And sometimes that got, gets more attention than the good things he does. And especially, uh, he had some games on Jax yeah. that I showed like Yups, the, the top lane for but Academy said, look, no one talks about that. What he's doing here on the yeah. side wave, what he's setting up for it's, his team. It's so unfair though. I it, said the same thing. Like he's yeah. calling right now that he's going to go mid. Like yeah. he's preparing that much, much earlier. It's like, it's like when people ask me to, to watch his games, it was before I was going to come to Brazil, right? So I was just as brutal as possible comparing him to like the top, top laners in Europe and, and in, in Korea, you know? So obviously I'm going to be really rough on him. He could play in LEC. Like, Robert could play in LEC for sure. Yes. He'd be middle of the pack, maybe a little worse, I think, um, in the right environment. I think, for example, uh, Tin as well. Like, he's really good too. It's just like Tin, for example, like, people think that I, I hate Tin too. People think that I think Tin is bad. But I watched him on Jace. It's like his worst champion. He doesn't know how to play the champ. Like, no offense. So, people Because think, you never see his Lucian. Yeah, but he's really good. <laughs> He's good. He's With genuine. Lucian. No, no. He's just really oh, good in okay. general. Like they're good <laughs> players. They're really good players. They're very, very <clears throat> high caliber players. They're one of the players that like transcend the region. They're above the Brazilian level for sure. Like a couple names that pop up, you know? Yeah. yeah like if I, I said that Io was the wasted potential. I always said B-Boy was really good too. But and, yeah. the player that I had, no offense to ever, you know that. You're second. And personally, Best, but uh, the one that I had the most enjoyable relation as a coach in my entire career was Tinos. 
is really good. And he at, at now the, the version that you see now yeah. is a much more mature version. Yeah. The version that I was presented with was a version that had much, much more flaws, personally. Yeah. And even though he had them, he was special at that time. He and has 11 like, years of I, career. You don't know that, but historically, like they, they win uh, a tournament as Kaboom yeah. at the time. And they go out as the Cloud9 thing that let do it for Kaboom, blah, blah, blah. There's that history. And then they come back and they slump for one year. Like the same yeah. guy, like Lep, that you probably don't know. I know Lep, he's legendary. Okay. Yes. Ah, you know Lep about the teleport, yeah. No, I know Lep about the... <laughs> Zero, the 16, yeah. 8, something yeah, like that. that. Like Lep, Tinoz, and Minerva, they were the core of the team. Yeah. And they spent one year like just having bad performance. And no one would want them in their teams because they were labeled as turbo makers, the three of them. Like extremely throwable some players to deal. And at that time I was presented with the chance to have the three of them. Yeah. And it was challenging, but I knew that even at the time, Tinoz was worth it. I think the problem with coaching is a lot of coaches are ex players and they coach because okay, for me, like if you're not a coach that puts the players first above everything in terms of like your approach, your trolling. But most coaches coach because they, they're not good enough to be a player anymore so they're yeah. either trying to weasel their way in to the org so they can play again I saw that a lot I saw this a lot which is like unbelievable or they're doing it for an ego trip you know like oh I'm the coach I'm better than you I know more than you you yeah. need to obey me yeah if, so like if, if if they think you don't obey them instantly they're like oh troublemaker but it's not like that you know like the stardust okay the loud the loud video like the triple make thing is because they actually burn things poison people so that that's like huh? yeah yeah this, poisoned were, people yeah not poison with actual poison but like it was like the <laughs> i don't know how to say that in english but la chanchi how do you say what that? you're talking about like the uh, he's not Minerva gonna mainly Minerva <laughs> is, no no, no. Uh, <laughs> they were, it was like not a poison when you say poison in english it sounds like we, it's actually that, but it's like way. He's shitting your food. It's something like that. Uh, yeah, yeah, like messing <laughs> with your food, you know? What did he do in the food? Uh, there's some medicine that makes you go to the bathroom a lot, for example. They would tamper with Black that. Sense. They were, when I say troublemakers, okay, really, that's what you mean. Like throwing things put, at the pool, okay. like I randomly, thought, to I see what would, happens when you throw some things at the pool. Put fire in his bed. Really? Put fire on things. Really? No, not just on my bed, on me. Yeah, on I, each other. Okay, that's pretty crazy. Like Minerva, he would. I had to confiscate that because he would have a lighter, like a cigarette lighter, and randomly during a, during during a review, he would try to burn team or lap. Why is he like this? Sir? Uh he was a a devil. It was crazy. He was really? a devil. But Minerva's still my favorite gay guy. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's it's actually my favorite player. Okay, I worked with him for two years and a half. And he did all the most insane things I have seen a player do with me or with the staff. Actually, it's unbelievable when I look back at it. <clears throat> and it was a joy, even so. So the troublemaking thing is really troublemaking. But the thing you said about yeah, that's being I... better than your players and ego and stuff, that's the first thing I say to my players, you're probably better yeah. like at what you're doing. In academy, maybe... Maybe there is not. something that maybe they don't have the knowledge of yeah. some stuff that happens sometimes. Yeah. And, but even so, the first thing I say to the player is like, probably you are better than me. You played this game the entire, if you're here on pen gaming Academy, you're probably better than me on the game on that as aspect. And it's not my job to be better than you and to, or to impose my ego on you. That's the, the, not the my thing, job. The thing is I really want to highlight. Mo a lot of people ask me this question and I didn't answer it cause I couldn't be bothered. And by the way, if you DM me and I don't respond, I used to, but it's become, if I want to DM, respond to everything, it's more like a full-time job now. So I can't do that anymore. So sorry if I don't DM, DM you back. I just, yeah. That's why. Yeah. I used to, but I stopped. I didn't realize that there were this many people like that were interested. Anyway. <laughs> Everyone goes through that, okay? Yeah. Like Prieto, when he wasn't a, a celebrity, like last, an a internet celebrity, he used to answer every dm but now he knows it's impossible but it's actually impossible with my work schedule um anyway the, the point i was trying to get at is the loud documentary that was a huge drama you know with tinones talking back to the coach yeah for me like people are asking me about that right 
I think it's fine to talk back to your coach, bro. Like, I'm not their father. Yeah, we're a working exactly relationship, that. right? The only thing that Tim did bad there, in my opinion, speaking Portuguese. Yes, that was fucking dumb, to yeah, be yeah. honest. But if he spoke in English, it's fine, no? Like, you're not. I mean, of course, you should use respectful language, and that's one thing I love about my team. My team is like, I think, really professional with the way that we handle conflict in general. And what I always tell them also is like, it's not replicable because it's not something that we built in a day. We built this over many weeks. So That's now, the trick. now everyone's going to look at behind the stars and be like, oh, Katie's doing this. Let's try this. But it's hard. You I can't mean, go back. Once yeah. the relationship is hard, you can't go we, back. We, we prepped that from December, you know, like from all our interviews and everything. So anyway, Tin, I mean, I think it's fine to talk back to your coach. Just You already have to, you already have to, to deal with ego players. It's not a matter of ego. It's just a matter of like, if they believe something different from you and you need to have a conversation. No, no. In this case, yes. But something, sometimes you have some players, they are wrong in, 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 in any ways. He tries to talk back to you. They don't accept any, any kind oh. of feedback. This is an ego player. There, there is a difference between ego and um, stubbornness, I think. Yeah. Uh, the ego ones, no. We don't have that in Kate. I've had to deal Not with in that Not in but in your career. Yeah, I have. I have. I have. Uh, and those are, those are difficult, you know. Um, what they had to realize back then with the ego players is like, I will throw the split, you know. Mm -hmm. Like if, 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 if like one person is terrorizing four other people and their improvement, if we lose, we lose. And once they understand that, I think it's a bit better. And you need to also like teach them how to be better, better people. I think we dealt with that a bit in Rogue, for example. How to like give and take feedback the right way. There's a really great book. I can't remember the name. Um, the Emotional Intelligence, something. It's like a way you meant to talk, direct commun... Maybe I'll link it in my Twitter sometime, but... Uh, link, it, link it in Amazon so you can get it. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. But, but there's a there's like a book on how you can like communicate, for example. I won't link it to you because you're in pain. But, um, and we're enemies, technically. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, like I definitely had to I do actually a like my, I actually say that there's no enemies in this job if you know yeah. what you're doing. Yeah, I think so. I think but so. rivals, maybe. Enemies? I yeah. don't think so. Let's go to the next question. Uh, just on that topic, I'm going to go faster with the questions because yeah, there are many. We had but just on the more than topic, 20 I questions. need to say that I know Tino for a long time. Yeah. And I know that part of what he did is because he told them that it would happen and he was proving a point there. Like, no, it's not about the game. Yeah. He was just proving a point because he desperately yeah. knew that if things were the way they, they like... So there's more to the story, yeah. There's more. That's what Because he like. thought that the way the things were headed <clears throat> wouldn't lead to, the, to a win in the future. Like, the way the things were structured on the team. Because you can mm -hmm. see everything. You just yeah. see what they show. But I can see. I can and see that. actually, that's the biggest question of all. When you see behind the stars, or when you see... Pain things, when you see kid things, uh, loud things. The biggest question I always ask is why they're showing me that? And that one about loud, I don't know. Yeah. I couldn't answer why they're showing me that. I have some ideas, but... But it was the hardest one. No, I had, I had an idea too. I, I had an idea, but it was hard. Like normally it's easy. For, you say, I ah, think they're showing me for that me because it's easy. of that. For me it's easy. I, I think that is the... It's the reality of but, the team. But I think because we're in esports and we're experienced, we know. But I think for, I actually think they fucked up because they antagonize their players a lot. Yes. Yeah. And the problem is they either antagonize their players or their coach. But that's why storytelling is difficult. And by the way, shout out to Lace and Chuck Zero because they actually do a really good job. But they're incredible. They're yes. fucking amazing. Because if you fuck up, you just become a, the biggest cunt. Uh, yeah. Can I say, I can't say that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I can. Okay, in Brazil, I don't get cancelled. In America, it's a no-no, but it's you become horrible, the biggest yeah. cunt ever, you know, <laughs> so easily. And I think they antagonize the players a lot. And before they antagonize the coach too much. So one one week I'm looking at social media, it's just, I'm getting barbecued because everyone's just like flaming Stardust. And the very next week, everyone's just flaming Tinnons. And I'm like, guys. And that's why I have, I had those questions of why they're doing this. But yeah. Yeah. anyway. Paulo yeah. Jr. said, Hi guys, hi Coach Steele. How comfortable do you feel with overall Brazilian performance on our regional championship, CBLO? And why our, our way to play, I think that is he's referring to yeah. playing internationally, doesn't fit on, fit on words. I mean, why is there a huge gap? I think people are very results driven. So the way mm -hmm. that we play is very different, I think, from every other team. I, yeah. I think we're very systematic. 
uh, because I brought I bring the way that we play in, in Europe here directly, and other teams are just playing. I think they're more player led. I think every every Brazilian team right now is player led. In my opinion, do you know why? Yeah, do you imagine I, why? Yeah, it's orgs, no? It's like orgs and big names and it's ego. Uh, mostly it's because of Koreans too. Because yeah. when when I worked with I Koreans know. here, what they told me, I, I was assistant. I, I am still the assistant guy. Yeah. But when I worked with them, I had to be the play-driven guy because systems wouldn't work the way they should. When we tried systems, the long story, but for example, Stardust was a system guy. Yeah. And Lucia at the time was the play-driven guy. Things didn't match. But in, in Korea also, it's the way that you sell your systems too because the yes. culture is very different. So sure I, I've worked different. with Koreans before and it's like easier because I'm Korean. But if you're a foreigner trying to do this, it's impossible, yes, it's bro. Yes, much harder. So I always tell them, like, if you want a Korean, you need either two Koreans that are players that will lead your team. Yes. And it will automatically go to the Koreans, just naturally. Because, to be honest, Korean players, even like the middle of the pack, are a lot better than most of the Brazilians. Yes. Or you need a Korean coach that can speak Korean. Like, or it, it's, it's not possible. If you just randomly bring a Korean into a team full of Brazilians, it's fucking impossible. Yes. I, it's fucking I, impossible. I have been through this two yeah. parts. Yeah. Uh, Vinicius Costa said, Coach you and he, what's that? CHF? What? What's CHF? I don't know. Coach you, I just want it's to say, but I'm not... a VKS fan. No, no, the, 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 the currency, coin. the currency. The currency. Ah, I don't know. I don't know what's that, but Coach you, I just want to say that I am a VKS <laughs> fan since Snow's Mid. Oh, oh that was a long since time when? ago. Uh, we so had a mid. mid laner that's now a coach that's called Snows. That's in 2014, no? Yes, I know this one. Yeah, I, know this one. Yeah. I played against him a lot. He was actually good. And yeah. he was a specialist of Vi Mid before all this hypeness of Vi Mid, actually. <laughs> and I cried when VKS left Sibilo. Yeah. Every... Frank Swiss. It's like Swiss French. Oh, wait. That's a... It's a huge. Yes. Oh, yeah. boy. That's why, <laughs> that's why I asked. We're eating good tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And I cried when VK, VKS left CBLO. And it's just so fucking amazing to have someone like you working in my favorite team. So he said he's a big fan and enjoys you. Oh, I appreciate that, man. But what makes me really amazing is my merchandise. Uh, Technologia. <laughs> <laughs> 10% uh, off. Gabriel, Gabriel Besades. Gabriel Besades. This issue of leaving a profession in which you have a degree is due to the lack of investment vacancies and below average pay here in brazil you can ask that but i'm just contextualizing that's not actually true for everyone yeah but i'm aware for example uh engineer yes to some degree like what you're saying about uh nono depending of what it is but for example in my case it's not below average if i was actually my brother is also a doctor like he's younger yeah. than me and if I was actually working like him, I wouldn't receive below average pay. But for most people, yes, like we had some problems with, <coughs> it's a much bigger problem than that, okay? Yeah. With uh, high degrees and- I was talking brother. to this really cute girl and uh, she was talking to me about her job and she makes 1200 reais a month, but she works like five hours a day, five days a week. So she makes like 10 reais an hour. Yes. That's crazy. Crazy! Yeah. What? Really? A lot of people do those kinds of things. It's complicated. Yeah. And actually, if you, most of the, I, I use Uber a lot. A lot of Ubers here have degrees. They just yeah. earn more with it's, Uber. It's, yeah, but it's a complex topic that we should avoid. Super right? complex topic. Super complex topic. Yeah. I, Batista, what's your first impression of kids' story? Like no. the, the, the past. The past. Story. And what do you represent for fans? Have you worked in an org with a similar philosophy before? Hashtag Tropa da Foca. Never, never, never. By the way, Tropa da Foca, let's go, man. <laughs> uh, nah, nah, never, never. And I, I really think the org is special, the story is special, and I'm really glad they're in CB Law. Super special. I'm very happy, I'm very happy. Um, Carlos Eduardo, good evening again. Good evening, everyone. So today, which players do you think have the level to play in a top tier team in LEC? You said two, no? Robo no, I, no, no, no one, no, not in top tier. Maybe ah, top tier, top tier Sorry, one. You said like top, maybe Malrang. Like, maybe Malrang. No, Malrang. Mal 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 I mean, I think like in some teams, Hugo could play because he's he's laning is good. The problem is 
when you play in top teams, Gates. Like, like when I'm imagining, for example, like Tinones landing against Caps, it's really hard. Mm -hmm. Like in in Brazil, you get away with more because people don't punish your mistakes in lane as hard. And it's the same in like mid bottom tier LEC. People don't punish lane mistakes as hard. But when you play in top teams, they coordinate and they're good in laning 1v1. So you get you cannot play the game. So like if you don't have the base level to lane, it's very, very hard to beat the top level. But where, whereas like a player like Gigo, I think he, he has, aside from his DNA, he has really good hands and fingers. So, and he actually knows like trading patterns and he's like really aggressive and knows how to play lane. So he's already like halfway there, you know, in terms of what he can Perfect. do. Perfect. Next one is Abel Fragoso, one of our <coughs> top, top uh, supporters. Good evening, everyone. What a moment, guys. My ask, my question, in case. Brazil has already the conditions to advance on the Swiss phase of words, or will you have it soon? I think it's a it's a long term project for for me. But the biggest thing for me that I noticed in Brazil is like the way teams play. Mm -hmm. It's you can tell it's instantly like really player driven, and the player driven knowledge and their ability is like lacking. Uh, that's a very strong word to say because I do have a lot of friends in the scene and obviously I respect them as players, but compared to some special people that I've seen, like really special, like when I watch Scout play or when I watch Caps play, those player-driven teams yes. are fine, right? But player-driven teams in Brazil, it's very hard. That's why I really am trying to do this thing with for coaching, you know. Um, but we're also kind of player driven, to be honest. Like we have a lot of space for players yes. to talk. It's like, just like systems; they need to exist. Yeah, Brazil, like, like I can say from a pretty experience. good perspective that Gigo popping off was like I knew that he would play well. Yeah, but that was above all the expectative. I don't know about yours because you are training them, so yeah. yeah. But for everyone, it has a big impact on winning some games. Like yeah. a biggest than expected. I mean, like, let me put it this way. I play, I watch Gigo play um, in my POV. And I already knew he was good, but I wasn't expecting this much. When I watched our first scrims, within the first three days, I told my management we need to extend him. Three days. It took me three days to watch him play. And the way he performs and like talks in the review and thinks about the game, I was like, we need to extend this guy. And, and people don't don't realize that, but I had the same things with many players, but mostly when I know I shouldn't extend. Normally one, two days, you know that. Yeah. But yeah. Giga especially, he grows a lot Giga from the last special. year. Yeah. Giga is special. Yeah, super special. He's a more mature player. He's a best player mechanical. Yeah. Everything and he's a changes person. a lot. Yeah, he's a and person. he's a very good yeah. person. And thing is, like, people give me credit for it, but I didn't do shit. Like, for me, I'm like reaping the rewards of having a good team, you know? It's so nice. <laughs> I'm just like being chilling and they're just like, <laughs> they're no like play. working. <laughs> but like I said, even though you're reaping the, the rewards, yeah, it's the occasion, the, the, the way that everything sinks, it has a meaning behind it because maybe if it was a coach that wouldn't like use him the right way, you know, I like just steer him in the right way, even though not using, but it's steering there in the right yes way. Yes and no. I think the play the, the players I have are really incredible. And personally, I think a lot of it has to do with my media too. Because I just spam media, so people give me more credit than I I mean, I, I do too. think I do think I use Giga well, personally. And I think I'm very good at what I do. That that I have some pride in that one. But at the same time, it's like it's really unfair if I say it's like I'm the one that's using him. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You put him in anywhere, you put him in any piece, right? He you put probably, him in loud, yeah, yeah. you put you put him in pain, you put him in loud. Yeah, probably. Yeah. You perform in top yeah. level. I think so. Shemwell. <laughs> Shemwell asked, in Brazil, the game approach is not focused on the players and has a punitive approach. So how do you intend to differentiate? <laughs> it's, 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 it's hard because some, some things I even don't realize if it's a normal, it's an actual word. Sometimes I have to yeah. translate in my head okay. two times. How to differentiate, differentiate, differentiate yourself from the reality of backward staff in Brazil. He's saying like of... Uh, Coaching staff in general. Bro, like, okay, yeah. I do think that there are probably a lot of int coaching staff from the stories I heard. But there are some really good ones too, man. Yeah. There are some really good ones. It's just like, it's complicated. You know how we talked about Zeus and coach? It's a safer coaching staff, you know? <laughs> if the orgs are iffy, it's hard. Do you know, do you know, yeah, you obviously know Sarkis. Sarkis was on Academy for almost three years. 
Yeah, it's like, disgusting. I, I was one of the guys that, yes. It's disgusting. I was yeah. one of the guys that pushed him on the end of the year because I said, dude, it's one of the two. Like Luke, Luke Smith-Tahara, to be clear, next year should be Sevilla. I said, should be Sevilla. And Sykes says he's making a great work in Sevilla. Yes, oh, I said, good. you have two options. It, because when it was getting near the end of the year, he said, push for CBLO. I will help you with everything I can. And if you don't, I will help you get a CBLO team because don't do it like... You need to be on a CBLO don't, team. Yeah, and don't like look look down upon yourself. Like yeah. just embrace the... I'm telling you. You just him. have to have big balls, you know? You just have to like know that you're worth something. Yes. And it's it was. So and I said that just much before. Like when I got to the yeah. podcast, I always said, this guy... It's so good. It's true. Hi guys, uh, it's my first time super chatting in my life, and it's just because of you. See, your job is this is Linker. Your job is fucking awesome. I am just I, I just graduated and on data science on that data science, and I would like to work with League of Legends. How do I do it? Okay, so data science is great. I think data in general in League of Legends is very difficult because patches change all the time. Um. There is always positions available for good analysts and they can make good money. I've heard of analysts making up to 500 KAIs, $100,000. Yes. For example, um, it was that guy that was with T1. Do you know who I'm talking about? The guy that's living in Japan. He's not in data science anymore. Uh, I know the guy that you know he, he married about. his daily in Japan. Yeah, he likes so. uh, fighting but, games. I know the guy. But, like he, for Twitter, but let but... me say something. Ah, I, I, I want to talk about Bill for a second. Because this guy, he, he's kind of noob at the game right? Well, at least he was when he first started. I think he learned a lot with, with us, but three weeks into him being an analyst, he's too fucking smart to just be an analyst. If you really want an impact and you want to be involved with League of Legends, be a coach. This is what I'll say to you, okay? So, for, for example, this Beal guy, right? The guy that I have worked in Valorant. Yeah. He was like Radiant. He was like the highest rank in FPS game. He's like Diamond 1 in solo queue. Of course, Brazil Diamond 1, but doesn't matter. And he graduated from Sao Paulo University, which is an elite university in Brazil, right? Yeah. Like elite with an economics degree. He, he can work in like Uber and shit for like 150K a year USD. And he chose esports out of passion. He was like a division one basketball player. If I let this guy rot as an analyst, I'm a piece of shit. That's what I think, you know? So we promoted him. Same, like within that three weeks. I think if you really want an impact, you need to be a coach. I think, really, in any it's, way, shape, It's just form. because of the label and the, yes. and the way it works. Okay, I'm, I'm a little, little less nice than Yoko. It's because esports is young and there's a lot of people in charge that are pieces of shit and they don't understand that data yes. is important. So you need to be, <laughs> it's me right. like the guys in charge, a lot of them are complete pieces of shit. So you need to like, just have the coach label, learn the game. And if you implement data into your coaching, that's fucking fantastic. For yes. example, like, I'm so fucking dumb I always tell this to like my coaching staff and my players. If we're geniuses, we'd be building rocket ships next to like Elon Musk, right? But then there are actually there are actually geniuses. That's what I realized. I was like, wait, there are people like Bill that are actually geniuses. For example, so and why be, you are here? You, you, yeah, if you're good at data, you are do what you can do, and that would be amazing. Be a coach, ask for a budget, get someone that. It's not a genius to yeah. work the data like the Just numbers. Get a code crunch the numbers. Yes, he's gonna crunch the numbers for you. Yeah. Like you can ask for someone to do that for yeah, you. Yeah, exactly. And then you just use your that, knowledge yeah, to that, interpret. That, that, okay, if you're a data analyst, okay, no flame, bro. But if you're a data analyst and you you have zero esperanza, you're like no hope because you think you're like not the brightest, you know, guy in the shed, and you're also not a great like communicator. Because Beal is an exception. Now that I think about, it. he's a bit of an exception. And you just want to be a code slave. My advice to you is don't come into esports. Work in traditional te technology. Oh, you're going to make much more. Yeah, because you're going to make way more. And it's not worth it. But if you think you have the other skills, then you should go for being a coach. And then you hire a code slave that isn't, that, that is stupid and doesn't watch this podcast and doesn't learn this tech. And then like someone that's dumb will come and then they'll like take the job, you know? Yes. Yeah. Bruce Willis said sexo. That's just it. That's <laughs> amazing. Thiago Esmeraldo. Hi, Sil. Big fan here. If you guys win CBLO, what are your thoughts for that lineup towards the MSI? Already? People in Brazil are extremely hopeful. Guys, right? the, I don't Hopefully even... Hopefully uh, I'm not going to even hush. answer that question because, like, we can lose to any of these teams at any moment and 
to be honest, some of these drafts that we got were pretty illegal. Like we got some really, really good drafts. So we know that everyone in the team is really humble. After we win, maybe you can ask me that question again. I don't know how I feel about it right now because I think we're not at the level where we think like that, you know? Like we, we went into T, we went into INTZ game and we're like, okay, we're playing with T1 guys. And everyone was like, so try hard. And we still played so bad. We played so bad that INTZ game. It was unreal. So right now, the way we are right now, if you play with us an LCK team, it would be a slaughter. And that's not what we need to think about right now, you know? We need to take like small steps and be better. Ok, um okay. gain of uh, yeah. each time. Né? Luiz Gabriel Lopes Honorio Sil, have you ever been uh, to Outback in Brazil? <laughs> yeah, it's good. Yeah. yeah, it's good. You like it? Yeah. You're the first Australian <laughs> saying it's like... <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's yeah, it's I like, extremely I like ironic. It's really good. But oh, I think okay. I went to um, Pobre Juan. Pobre, Pobre Juan. Juan. As, as well. I know, but Pobre Juan is, it's is so, way better. It's, it's better, more expensive. but it's like... A, We We're have better barbecues here in Brazil. Yeah, I went you to already to go to Barbacoa. It's fucking good. Yeah, it's amazing. A barbacoa is another level. God, but it's for rich people. It's not for me. Yes. Go to La Boracheria. La Boracheria. You can send me a list of restaurants. Yeah, yeah. And um, yeah. Do you know one place that okay. the Koreans, the, the one place that I always told Koreans to go or to order and they would love is Casa do Porco do... Casa do Porco. It's this the best one, restaurant in Sao Paulo. This in one, the best of the world. I mean, it's because sometimes what they would think is that uh, the way the food is presented, not just like made, but presented, is not... They, 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 it didn't sound good for Koreans in many ways. Yeah. But Casa do Porco d does something, especially with their... Um, there's a menu that called menu degustação that's like a little bit of everything yeah. that they loved. So try Casa do Porco. Yeah, but I'm not you that tatty. I think Koreans are like really picky because the food yes. industry in Korea is really competitive. Yes. So if you want to make it, everything needs to be really good and cheap. But I'm Australian and I, I come from Nahua, you know, the streets. I'm like fucking scuffed. But, but this one is so worth it. So if it just tastes Trust good, me. I'll just eat it, you Trust know? Trust me, this one that's is philosophy. completely <laughs> worth it. Yeah? So, okay. Alice Landin, salve da tropa do Foca. We miss our, uh, your live streams. Can, yeah. you word, can you win Worlds this year so you get back to Twitch? Okay, first of all, us winning Worlds is not possible. I'm sorry, guys. It's literally not possible. I'll tell you guys right now that I can say. I, I'm not gonna, like, uh, may, uh, we're still gonna try to, like, get as deep as we can, obviously, if we, if we get the opportunity to even go. Because Brazil only, for some reason, has one slot. I don't know what's up It's with that. It's not make sense. I am almost sure seriously. that if we would If you did a bit better last year, we would yeah. have to respond. Now. It's so but. fucking weird. Anyway, but um, live streams. I don't stream on purpose because I think uh, it, it takes too much of my time at the moment. And uh, I think it takes attention away from the players. And I think that's bad. So. Yes. So uh, she continues. Jokes aside, much love for you. Thank you oh. for, make, for making this episode with the podcast. Oh, cool. Appreciate that. Uh, And this, I, I can know, and I, I can already know that this is one of the podcasts that people will review more. Like sometimes yeah. we don't have like this much of a, an audience live. How many people are watching today? 3K. 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 Oh, I thought it'd be more. Really? It's because we are only speaking English. Ah, true. Yeah, yeah. This is, but this one a is A lot gonna... of people say, yeah, we watch later with the uh, subtitles. Disculpe, meu português é muito ruim. Actually doing well. Yeah. But... This one is the one that gathers strength with time. Like people are gonna watch it after you can like on YouTube. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Ten percent off technology. You can be sure. <laughs> like the the cuts too. Like the cuts are gonna yeah? do well. Cuts. Too. Yes. Okay. Like we cut like small pieces of the video. Mm -hmm. uh, Paul Juno again. What do you think about Baiano and Lilda's Landers? Do you feel like they could save the competitive scenario in Brazil? Please send a message to them. I mean, they're not saving anything, but I do think they're a really great asset. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, come on. But that's, that's the slogan, you know, uh, they yeah, need to sell them yeah. too. No, yeah. but I think Bayano is an incredible guy. Talk to him. Absolutely incredible. He's a genius, a genius, a genius. Genius, genius, yeah. genius. genius. Muito genio. Genio? Yes. Genio. 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 Yeah. Like My, the, the, the party you went, it was uh, like, not just the party, but the just, things he, he does are really like, they, they, he moves the scenario yeah. in a good way. Just in general, like that whole group of people, they're very influential. And I really think that what they're doing is really cool. And you know, about that because in other regions there are guys that could be like him they have a lot of power in yeah. their hand but normally they don't use it in, in the right beha way. behalf of the region yeah. so 
So, Ele yeah. already, you don't see the, the biggest product here in Brazil. Cebolão is coming. Cebolão. You'll be there. Yeah. The Cebolão is, the last one. is amazing. It's amazing. If, amazing. If I don't go MSI, I was going to coach uh, Tokus' team, yeah. which would have been really cool. It's amazing. It's just mm, yeah. out of this world. And I mean, if what they say is true about this year, this year is going to blow everything. Yeah, yeah. It's but it's, it's the same amazing. time as uh, finals, I think, though. Or it's going to destroy everything. It's after Cebolão finals and before yeah, MSI started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the, the, it's the main thing is like, I think he's really incredible and the viewership <laughs> numbers went up a lot because of him too, right? That's really cool. That's yeah, really cool. It's, it's amazing. just amazing. That's just amazing. He's carrying LCS2 now, by the way. Yes, no, he's carrying like, LCS2. He's actually carrying it's LCS2. Yeah, yeah. yeah 20, almost 20% of the yeah. viewership is from Baiano. Uh, Igor Lucio, kudos for, I'm going to translate, kudos for Joko about hearing the chat. Yeah. yeah, this was about the translation thing. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Kaique Mahoney, Chris, read my message on <laughs> Double T by Twitter. What is the most important thing for a professional, not a player, but a true professional? Desire. I think, I think desire, like, like you need, like, I think it's, it's for anything you need to want it yourself, you know? Yes. You need to want it yourself. <laughs> There's actually a meme clip with me. And at the time, yeah. I did like this was the craziest thing I would do in my life. I don't regret it, yeah. but I would never do it again. I didn't get to watch the uh, interview that you did with him. It was um, the face, the, the face check, the thing. face check. You know, yeah. oh. and I didn't get to watch it because the subtitles were not available yet. Yes, but um, I'm curious because you're a legend in the scene. Kinda, I a, you are. I at least amongst coaches, he is. Yeah, yeah. And I talk to a lot of players, and they all say good things about you. But and he could head coach Civil Law. I had right. offers last split. Yes. Yeah, it would be very weird for it, uh, you not he to have that. He chose to stay in academy. So why, why are you such a masochist? I'm not a masochist. In the state yes. academy. I, is. I, ca I is. can be. I've I can seen be, academy scripts. I can, be, <laughs> I, can be, I can be as blunt as, I mean, if you haven't watched his episode, but the thing is, when I was in Flamengo, we were again second place. I never won a CB Law. I won like, all the other tournaments you can win in Brazil, except Cibilo. It was like yeah. second place four times. Yeah. So when I was on Flamengo, we were second place again. And the second split, I was in post CEO. And it was a mess. Like it really messed with my head in a bad way because I had, I, they, they threw at me a responsibility that I never thought I would have. And I was underprepared for that job. Like CEO is not a simple job to talk with. You are CEO. Yes. <laughs> this is what they, when pandemic hit. In what team? In Flamengo. Flamengo. Like when pandemic hit, I was hired as a coach. And then I had to move to that position because pandemic hit and no one was in Sao Paulo to like make the team Operate. work. The only guy that was available and it was crazy. Like, I know that was like a crazy scenario and no one. <laughs> this is Brazil. Yes, wow. and, and like the, the team Whoa. owner, the team owner at the time said, okay, you're a CEO, you're a CEO too now. And I said, what? <laughs> and then, yes, you take the decisions. <laughs> and I wasn't There's prepared for that. The administration. This is not real. See, I, had to, I had to stay split, watching everything, like dealing with sponsorship and dealing yeah. with management, but watching everything happen. And that made me extremely depressed at that time. Yeah. I didn't want to deal with League of Legends ever in my life. I went back to studying medical, medical school, like preparing for a specialization, probably in neurology at that time, because I said, fuck it. This is like, yeah, this is so and, and the way the community looked at me, it was a, that it was my fault for that split, but it wasn't that even coaching. Went bad. Yes. It, and I couldn't say, and to this day, I never talked about that because they did so many bad things in order, but I stayed silent because it was well, better what, for what the place team. did you come then? The, after like, Flamengo? Yeah. No, like no, I stayed three months with no team. No, but the Flamengo project, like, did they come 10th or something? Or like, yes, we were second okay. with me okay. as a coach and yeah. we were 10th with me as a CEO. Yeah. So that didn't work out. There you go. But everyone looked at me as a figure that is like always there. And I was the one that showed my face to the public mm -hmm. and they hit a lot. Oh, there you go. And guys. I said, but that's normal. And it was actually good for the team if I stayed silent. Well, wh why did you not talk about it until now? No, I I did, but I never. Some went in people specific. of the team have NDA. Yes, it's, you still have NDA now. It's a bit hard. Are you in trouble yeah. now? No, 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 not at this moment. Okay, but it was actually kind of hard. This happens to some guys in this scenario. Yeah, yeah. But 
I was really depressed about that and said, man, this is so fucked up. Everything because you got even fucked over. Yes, in my mind. Yeah. And I had like a lot of deaths in the family too. So okay, that joined bad, everything together. And I didn't want to do with League of Legends. But Bayano stood up and randomly asked me to coach his wide drift team. And we actually, it was like very funny because I didn't want to. I said, oh, I will never I'm coach done. a wide drift team. This is like, a joke, yeah. I am a civil law coach. What I'm doing? Coaching a video game. <laughs> coaching a cell phone, phone game. We went like, we had like tournaments every, almost every week and we won 30 in a row and 30. Yes. <laughs> I got a lot of money from that. I'm not going to lie. And a lot of money. <clears throat> yes. Because wide drift was like insane. The, the, the prize pool was insane. They but have that tournaments was... every week in the, every week. How much they... is the prize pool there? Mm. I can get here the prize pool for the last one. Nowadays it's not anymore, but at the time it was like amazing. The greatest prize pool you remember? Ah, millions. It's like like the, the, for the tournament, the, the actual. Yeah, for the tournament. Yes, like it was. How much was the most? Can you, can you share like how much the most you earned in one tournament? <coughs> I have to look up. I don't remember. But see, hate or sex are asking the real questions here. Yes, <laughs> but it was like, it was like too good to be true. And we were the winning team that won everything in Brazil. Like not exactly everything. We lost some tournaments, but mm -hmm. mostly. Oh. But mm -hmm. the money wasn't the, the good mm -hmm. part. Yeah. It wasn't for me in my career, but the good part was that I was working with young players, like 16, yeah. 17, and I found my passion again. Ah, That's the thing, because That's I worked with them and it worked. Like, uh, I was like, oh, I'm never gonna do this again. There you again. go, guys, Joko, Joko, DJ Oko, uh, exonerated. That's why uh, you coach Academy. Yes, and then when I, I stayed two years on Wide Drift, four months on Honor of Kings, and when I came back, I was like, I don't think I deserve it. Like, I don't think I deserve getting back to CP Law. I don't think I deserve like really? doing that. Like, it's a wrong way to think. Yeah. And a lot of people told me that that's, that was not the yeah. right way. But I was also very fragile with my health at that time. Yeah. Because when yeah. I went to the trip to China with Wide Rift, I mean, China is far away. It's very hard for Brazil. I had uh, two, I don't know how to say that in English, I'm going to try, two disc hernias, hernias yeah, yeah, on I my know back is, yeah. and I couldn't move. Like I had to wheelchair. Really? Because I didn't know I had that <coughs> until the flight. What you did develop on the flight? Yes, it's because I always uh, did streams, bad posture on gaming and I had the travels. Yeah, yeah. On, on, I, I used to travel every week, like 10 to 12 hours every week like going by, uh, by bus to go yeah. to CB Law because I used medical school and CB Law as a coach for three years. So my back was destroyed. And when I went to the China flight, like 50 hours, that was like the last row. Like my, my back just said, okay, up. Yeah. I broke. Yeah. And I'm done here. on China, and I'm, actually it was not China. China was after, it was Singapore. Singapore. And Singapore is extremely expensive to yeah, exactly. buy stuff there. And I was like, Shit, Riot covered like the, the expenses, but not the medical expenses was another thing. Yeah. So I had to deal with it then. And when I came back and Wild Drift exploded, I needed uh, a team. Wild Drift is gone. Uh, on, on West, yes. Yeah, okay. It's because of Honor of Kings. Like Honor of Kings yeah. is the big game for Tencent right yeah. now. And maybe Wild Drift's coming back. Okay. Maybe. Um, maybe. Yeah. But when it exploded, just to conclude, I also had back problems, so I need a team that was near my house. And Peng is exactly on my street. Oh, really? And I already was a coach for them. I, I was a good friend with everyone. So at the moment, I think in the, in the future, I want to go back to CB Law. Okay. But, but do you still believe you don't deserve it? No, now I deserve it. Now you deserve it, that's right. When I came back, I was extremely like, Maybe the game changed. He always deserved it, but he's sabotaging. I, yes, I, I, I was about somewhat. to give him a pep talk, you know? You know, guys, when we started, Sharpie was like, ah, but my English is not so good. And you are smooth as butter. You're smooth. Yeah, we're doing yeah. really well on that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so smooth. Uh, he, he takes, he's fluent. We know what's the problem. I'm not fluent at all. You know the problem. His standard, I'm not fluent at all. In a perfect his, his standard. Oh. His standard is really high. So his standard is very if high. If he, he sees someone complaining. I let Joko lead in today because he's no, much he, better than me. It's just because of his standards. He's doing like exceptional. Yeah. But yeah, when I come back, I was like not ready for it yet. Mm. Because I want to do a good job. 
Like, yeah. And I said, okay, let's try. <coughs> it was like mental. It was yes, mental. more mental than everything. And I said, okay, let's see if I can help this academy team. The same team that was ninth place, we went third. I said, same players. I said, okay, I can help this team. And the next year, I actually stayed on academy, even though I had civil law offers because this academy team. How like, long? How long is your contract? Uh, my contract. <laughs> <laughs> You can see the database, but ends on this year. Ends on this year. But Hi, Thomas. Some, but I'm not going to go in <laughs> specifics. It's, it's public, this, okay? But there is specific rules. Oh, Vex. What's up? You know, you're watching this, son. Yeah, watching. <laughs> the <laughs> thing about Academy is that this one, I didn't, I had some CBLO offers. For example, uh, when I was about to come back, Minerva asked for me to go to Rensga on CBLO. Rensga, oh. Yeah, Evita, but, Evita, bro. Yeah, yeah, Evita, exactly. Evita doggy. When he showed me the situation, Evita I said, doggy. no, 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 thanks, I'm going to go to that academy. Always, that, the things I heard about that, all, they put Croc in a cowboy costume. That is illegal. That's the least of the... the yeah, I heard the rest, but I so, can't talk about it. So it was more mental, but nowadays I think, like I said on face check, that I deserve. And if I can, I'm going to look forward to <coughs> the Let's next Let's fucking piece. go. Let's fucking go. Yeah, nowadays I... Guys, we already have three and a half hours of podcast. Really? Yeah, and we have a lot of questions. So uh, I suggest we don't read the rest of the questions because Uh, we stay here and we need to eat. Well, if anyone's upset and anyone needs someone to hate because he's cutting a great time short, it's Chappy. It's you. Not the hell, man. you. Really? What? You did this. You cutting this. See, I'm a man of the people. I want to read the questions, but it's okay. We can go eat uh, delicious sushi. O <laughs> que, que você acha, Joko? Assim. Porque tem muita, tem muita pergunta, gente. Eu posso fazer, eu posso fazer um, eu posso fazer, we can agree to do a speed run, if you want. Nah, it's, it, mm. it's whatever's best. It's all good. We can agree to I'm that hungry. if you want. Yeah, we can I'm do a speed run. We like, just, just speed and, it up, okay, and okay, then okay. we can okay, read everything. Okay. okay. I'm going to try my best, guys. Victor Gobi, hi, see you. Can I work with you? <laughs> this would be <laughs> the speed run. Yes, no, 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 let no, me, let no, me, let no, me. No, no, next. I am specialist in digital marketing and I can work for free just to help you and kid reach the highest potential. <laughs> DM him. Anyway. When people say, say work free? for free. Work for free? We g- oh yeah, this is actually yeah, a good me. <laughs> Igor Lucio, yeah. Sheppy asks you if he stimulates players that are going to the gym. I think that is one of the things that makes a pro player being an athlete. Yeah, we go, we go to the gym. We go to the gym. I mean, there's a lot of evidence behind why you should go. But, okay, quickly, Gigo doesn't go, but this guy is built like, listen, this guy is built like a um, bulldog. What's the, what's the name? You know the fucking muscular dogs? Yeah, yeah. Pitbull. 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 This pitbull. guy's a pitbull, bro. He doesn't go to the gym and he's bigger than me. He's just like... Fucking Brazilian genetics. He's crazy, this guy. One of the guys crazy. that I share most on internet is Rodrigo Guerra. Rodrigo Guerra. I'm soft, bro. Guerra. Maravilhoso. Champion Joko, I miss you guys. Uh, I messaged Joko on WhatsApp the, the question. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Let's see the question. I'm going to do the last one, okay? okay. Because then I, I can't move the flow. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you a question. Uh, José Paulo. In Sue's opinion, what's the reason for all the imports coming to Brazil to have a drastic drop in performance? This is clear from the public perspective. Bro, it's not a drastic drop in performance. The, the competition just got better, I think. That's, That's true, no? Like, okay, yeah. thing is, okay, INTZ is like trolling, but then the, the teams that had imports, for example, like Furia, um, what's another one? Uh, uh, Furia, Loss, Loss. Kabul, Loss. Like before, Loss. They're, they're, playing, they're playing against like a really strong top four, in my opinion. Yes, like yes. Kaboom, Pain, Us, and uh, Loud. 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 It's stronger than previous years, I think, in, scenari- in general. Red yeah, too. Yeah. The scenario changed. Like, yeah. no, it's not yeah. like I get, I import, I win. That that era is Because here we have improvements of game playing yeah. also below. Yes. Yeah, I think so. Dogon, D Dogon, said, See you, for someone that wants to be a coach and wants one day to work with you on CBLO, what would be a path that you suggest him to go through? Okay, so first of all, I don't suggest it. It's a terrible job. Um, yes, I really, double that. Really, but if you really want to work your way up, what helps a lot is if you hire in solo queue, high rank in solo queue, that like speeds things up a little bit because yes. you get caught. Um, but if you can't do that because not everyone can climb, for example, like I think it's impossible for me to get super high elo. Like I just don't have the brain and the hands. Then it's all about just like networking, working your way up from the bottom, talking to players, like learning about the game. You know, talking to players is the biggest one. It really helps. And coaches. 
Do you know the place that I can refer you to? Like the best place to have visibility right now? I would say it's Ignis. It's the inclusive yeah. center. Oh, because, that's true. That's true. Because you have zero, like, uh, they don't expect you to be the best coach, but yeah. they can learn so much from, exactly. from you. So what, Yeah, like even working with like amateur teams, you get to learn to work yes. with people. Like uh, Academy is on a level of uh, complexity that you can tank it on yeah. your first without guidance, but Ignis, you can actually tank it. Yeah. So that's a place to start. Facts. Uh, Vinicius like, Matheus Mine Geraldo I see you I watched CB Law for years but this year my wife started watching as well <laughs> thanks to Vivo videos she became a Vivo fan good luck and cheers from the USA oh nice listen first of all cool your wife is cool you're cool welcome they look like and, a good couple I, I, and I'm not I know the chat is probably saying some shit but I'm not Talarico okay? yes <laughs> it was good, <laughs> I'm not Talarico. <laughs> only two guys are cool. Talarico. Your guys I only cool. said it because it, I only did the face because it's funny, but I'm not Talarico. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Don't shoot me. A message from the fool. After this podcast, I'm going to uh, vouch. I'm going to cheer for you. The part that he talks, uh, he talked about family touched me very much. Yeah. The part that he wanted to give his children something that he never had. It was very touching. It's something that my father always talks about to me. Yeah. I think it's also very touching when people buy our jerseys. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And actually, Max, you need to give a rise to this uh, man. I had the same. Seriously, I had the same plan about having kids mm -hmm. and stuff. Yeah. Yes. You did. I did. And then what happened? League of Legends. Yes. Yeah, League of Legends. I gotta get out of here soon. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to go back to Seville. That's the thing. Like, <laughs> it's long gone. I actually had some things in my life that. I prepared and they still have. Yeah. Like uh, they joke about, I don't have kids, but I have five cats nowadays. Yeah. Uh, it's like this. this yeah. 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 <laughs> I, I feel this way too. That's like my the team. way I can my, my dreams. Insane. I no, but it is, it is, it's actually very fulfilling. Like, we, like uh, Kate is like family, you know? He's like yes. this. I have one dog. Could, oh, really? Actually, actually, yeah. Actually, his name is Rita. Do, because, right, Rita. Ah. <laughs> do you know, I actually had a lot of players that not like incidentally i was a pattern pattern uh, Pater no, yeah a paternal, 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 paternal figure, figure. For, for some players accidentally yeah. like yeah. not just they wanted but some of the players just like in in brazil it's like yeah really troublesome but that's another ricardo rocha carvalho 50 reais de novo opa guerreiro for the 50 bucks wasn't fair for the answers. Thanks a lot. I will keep trying my Ooh, best to learn. We are dining good today. Yes. yes. Sushis for oh, Gustavo yes. Miranda, what do you think about Brazilians in leagues like LLA, Porto Law, that's like LPL? Yeah. L LP, LP Law? Yeah. Japan, Spanish League, French League, by, uh, because of the size of our community and the skills, would that be possible? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure, bro. I actually think that what lacks here is the. Like the deal, the deal itself, because yeah. probably they would. I mean, also the Brazilian passport is not very great. Really? Yeah. Yeah. It's not the best. Okay. It's still better than a lot of countries. Like but if is... you're, if you're from like Indonesia or something, it's really hard. But, uh -huh. um, like just visas cost a lot. And Ah, this, this. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. This part. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Luis Gustavo, I have been watching law for years and I'm always cheering for players more than for the organizations. This year I am even cheering for the coach. Let's go see you. What? Do you think of the Mourinho version? <laughs> I don't know if you're I can't watch it, bro. Okay, I'm not going to lie. That's Every good, time that's it's... Good, that's good. No, but it cringes it's me. I cringe so oh, hard. Cr <laughs> I, can't, I can't watch it. I know I, I, I know I do a lot of cringe stuff, but I can't watch the video. It's just like... <laughs> it's hard. And Mourinho also always <laughs> swaps teams, guys. So don't yes. compare me to Mourinho. I'm not Mourinho. I'm very different. You want to yes. stay in Kate forever. Exactly. Much more good. Not forever. Guardiola <laughs> Not style. forever. Huh? You're much more Guardiola style. I don't know if I'm Guardiola. I think it's kind of offensive to compare an esports coach yes. to one of these guys, no? Uh, yes. Uh, like I was like teasing, but yes, yeah. they are on another, They're on another level. Yes. Another level. Uh, Gabriel Alexander, I can learn the bas basics. I should know. <laughs> I can learn the basics that I should know. This, uh, the, way, the way he did yeah. it is a bit harder. I'm, I'm trying to translate to. Where can I, uh, if I can, uh, he's asking if he can learn the basics of, for a coach, like a basic skills for a coach, by watching free content on YouTube, pro replays and educational content. You can, you can learn for free, but you can't learn for free just through YouTube. Like coaching is all about effort, right? So you need to study. 
you, you need, need to, to go, go through Scholar. it. You need to go through working with tier three teams, tier two teams if you can. Just try everything. Work with people. For me, uh, it, you need to go through the journey. There's no yeah. way. There's no way. Yeah. Testosterona do Magal. <laughs> okay. Okay. Hello, everyone. I know that it's a bit uh, early to talk about that, but Tuk and Smiley are two players that you plan to have for more than a split. If one of them eventually uh, really leave the team, a uh, kid has any plans to have new imports or new talent? No, it doesn't work like this. If Leleko plays good, he stays. That's it. Okay. Yeah. Gabriel Alexander again. And what's the best approach from someone with zero experience to have an opportunity in your organization? Who should I message and what I need to show? I mean, I work for free a lot too, to be honest. I just yes. volunteer and work my way up. Um, and just try to build your brand, do content, do whatever you can. Get yourself out there, talk to people. Yes. And for me, uh, this is a work that's not traditional. Like, yeah. as you don't have like the, a, a normal flow, like school, college and work, you have to do your best until the opportunity rises. Like you need to be prepared when the opportunity knocks. Yeah. Because it's going to knock one time. If you get it, you're yeah. done. Like exactly. you did. Yeah. I got lucky. Many times. I got very lucky. But, but it's not just luck. You, yeah. you are prepared. I made my own luck too. Yeah. Yes. That's the thing. That's the point. And the thing is like, also don't try, like you should try speed run it, but it's also hard to speed run it. Like I got very, I was at the right place at the right time, made the right decisions. And so, you are prepared for that. And I had a very like good run of things, but normally it takes a lot longer. Like I yes. think four years for most coaches, they're still like just getting out of academy, no? Yes, yes, people, yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, just, yeah. A lot of, lot of work. Yeah. That's why we say that it's not worth it. But it's not worth it. Not worth it. <laughs> we had a lot. We had a lot. We had I don't understand. Uh, we had a lot before you come to Brazil. How do you compare your previous vision and expectations Expectation about, about Brazil? Brazil? If we're living now, esse hat daí foi me pegou, hein? Can I see it? Hated. I think it's hated because he, you're speaking oh, so much. Ah, okay, 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 okay. Ah. okay. We hated yeah. the, you a lot. Okay, but, uh, okay, that, that's okay, fair. okay. First of all, this guy gave us five euros, so Whoa, that's a lot of money. Amazing. That's like five million highs. I can buy a car with that super chat. Yeah. Okay. So first of all, um, yeah, there were some. There were a lot of haters, but there were also a lot of fans too. Okay. I think it was just. Um, I mean, my experience in Brazil has been good, and, uh, <clears throat> you know, it, it's it's social media it happens. I mean, media is media, work is work. It's different. We're almost over. Awesome. Bruno Henrique, how was the experience of coaching Mono Champions in Cibolo? In Cibolo? <laughs> Do you like it? Did you like it? It was really fun, but Cortes is uncoachable. He he's die. uncoachable. <laughs> but the guy's a genius. He's, he's, uh, a, geni yes, a, genius. he's a genius, but he'll die in side lane no matter what. Did you understand the things that he kind of invented? Yeah, With yeah. Cortes yeah, so Yeah, it's so really fun, crazy. So fun, no? so fun. He's so good. He's so good. Yes, on his champion. It's Amazing. I actually think people like Ko could play. Do you know the thing T3. that he does with the item that I won't say because it's not nice to say, but the, the bug thing that he does on his stream actually got to Riot Patronals, right? Really? Because of him. But when one. they do send us, they don't specify like the yeah. how to the do it, it's yeah. him. Yeah, okay. Uh, He's insane. <laughs> yes, Panda Bier. Panda Bier. Panda Bier. Congrats to you. Thanks for the rise of Key to the top. As a kid fan, before, uh, since since before, uh, <laughs> since before the Missalva Batman era, oh, the previous is name of Kid is Missalva Batman. Really? Yeah, it's like yeah. Batman saved me. I, I understand the, that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, did you show him the incredible game against uh, Incredible Miracle? Yeah, that's the game yeah, I was I, talking I, I, about. I watched on stream. I watched on stream. Actually, the funny thing is, was on Campus Party. That's some event, like tech event that happens yeah. on Brazil too now. <coughs> and I was on the first line there because we didn't have that a lot. And when I got to this event, I don't know if you, you were there. No, no. I, when I got there, I live in Salvador. I was completely ah, yes. I was completely lost because the event was a pro programmer event. It, it was not esports, like programming. Like the guys had PC. Event. The guy, the guys built robots and fighting arenas. Yeah, that that's, kind of event. That's what uh, Vex did too. Though he used yes. to build robots. Yeah. Yes, and then like people that were there, randomly there was a EM stage. Yeah, a small stage, <laughs> randomly. Thiago Esmeraldo, uh, Outback's Blooming Onion is bigger in Brazil. Ah, uh, I didn't try the Blooming Onion, but I have tried That's it good. before. Like I've tried it before. Mm -hmm. it's he, good, it's good. Oh, wait, uh, he's giving Australian dollars. Yeah, yes. yeah. Ah, mate. Good is onion. that? It's, it's, it's fake money. It's not real money. And the last one, 
is about is the Rodrigo Guerra one. So you arrived in Brazil with the goal of improving the entire sports scene, but there is a perception that a gamer's life is easygoing. This has also happened in Brazil in other sports. With that said, how can we improve a scenario where the perspective of those on the outside also needs to be enhanced and improved okay. as solo queue? Okay, first of all, I didn't come here to save Brazil. I came here to do my best to improve Kate because yeah. they're paying me and that's fair. Of course, I'll help people like when I have time, but my primary objective is to like be a multi-champion to build like something really special at Kate and develop talent. Second of all, uh, what was the second question? It was like, I don't remember. I can go again. Uh, he's actually one of the legendary esport reporters here in Brazil. Really? That's why yeah. it's so... Oh, it's like, uh, nowadays he works with Fallen, you know Fallen. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's yeah. Not you could check. Ah, no, 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 again. I didn't yeah. know that. But he yeah. used, okay. used to be a reporter now. He, then he worked with Fallen and now he's going to work for someone really important because he's actually really good. Really? And he said, <clears> uh, <throat> that said how can we improve yeah. a scenario <laughs> where the perspective of those outside also need to be enhanced? Like, what he's asking it is like sometimes it's not about just the game. It's about like yeah, yeah, everything else. So, so first of all, like people that say that the 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 pro player life is easy, I think that depends on the team and depends on like like for example, our guys work so hard, dude. It's so it's not easy at all. But at the same time, like the privilege comes from understanding you get to compete. That's special. The fans are special. The experience of being on stage is special. These things are what drives players, and I think you just need to channel that in the right way to improve outside processes so that they work on things that make them a true athlete you know like that's question. like the definition when i when i won ignis cup last year with yeah. the, the girls like we we went through such hardship to get there yeah and i said that we are underdogs in the finals too okay and i said cherish this moment because yeah. it's how about that like the moment we play and we can like really perform because everything else like if you're able so to hard. like help your players and funnel your players to enjoy the journey then it's so much easier to ah, work yes. on the outside mm. yes aspect. surely yeah. and that's it and all that's the questions it. sushi we, got it. <laughs> <laughs> we can spend a lot of time here yet but we have almost four hours of podcast so you need to eat so thank you very much to, no to come here it's good fun when you want to come again we need that we make another episode but in that time i will Contract a translator, or you spend more time studying English. I need to my study English. Portuguese. Your English is so good, bro. No. You gotta stop this. No, 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 no. no you did well. So, you did so, well. Like, so, so. You, you wanted... did well. You conducted very well. I just. <laughs> but do you know why, why I did that? Because of you. Because I feel safer when you're here. Like right. it's not like taken out of Prieto, but for example, we had the Rainbow Six thing on the weekend, and he he couldn't be because of CB law, and Prieto did an excellent job. Mm. But I am much safer when you are here yeah. because he, for me, he is like exceptional as a host. Listen, listen Shappi, you, you're married, right? Yeah. My for me, I thought you, uh, you seduced your wife with English, bro. I thought you went to, you spoke in English. <laughs> no like, what's way, going dude. on? Yeah, what are you doing next Sunday? You know? <laughs> She's learning no, Korean. Right no, no, right. Like, the, the thing I don't that, speak the one word. That only Neo Haseo but, but and Sarang I, I know that what bugs him is because, like I said... He's he, a perfectionist. He's a perfectionist. Yeah. I know these people. The, the subject of his work is his voice. Yeah, it's so nice. So when his voice is used in a way that's not perfect, and everyone <laughs> is accustomed to hear his voice, like, brimming on the law. So when it's not like that, he gets bored. I promise I will study more for um, this time. I will study but Portuguese. I, I, I really don't think... You I need did, to you did bad. You, you're just like... Bro, your English is good. Like, you are the student sure. exactly good. everything that happened. Like, uh, for sure. I understand everything, but I can't express myself in the uh, way my, I my want. My English is not good. Like, he, uh, just, <laughs> he just said, I can't express myself in the way I want in perfect English. Yes. Like, ah, my my yeah. English is not good. Yeah. I, I, I was actually <laughs> ashamed to speak in English for a long time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the thing that made me like do it better was... Having to work with it, yeah, because it, I had to argue many times with players yeah. in English, and then when you do that, you get no shame. So thank you very much again, Sue. Awesome. Best of awesome. luck for you in awesome. CBL. And Joker, want to tell us something more? This was probably my favorite podcast for this year so far. Whoa, yeah. probably no, certainly. Like it was a really good talk. If you guys can watch with subtitles after, if you didn't grasp everything, please do. I want to have you here again, like in the future when, because I 
says that you're going to stay here with us for a long time. I want that. Because your job is do, you're doing well with your, your, your job. And I think it's going to like show even more in the future. Like it was really good pleasure. And you did something that I think no one ever did here. You actually got things from me that I normally don't talk. Oh, really? And normally, so normally I have a really high barrier. Really? And I get in the persona for, for the, the podcast, podcast and I shield some, some stuff. Yeah, I have some experience seducing people. You, know? <laughs> you actually did it not in that way. But I will take my wife so to sincere, eat sushi with You were so sincere in the things <laughs> that I felt comfortable talking about things that normally I don't do. Cool. And that's good for you. Awesome. Okay, let's get a beer sometime. Yes. You want yeah. to send some message for page fans? Yeah. <laughs> so first of all, I know the message is going to send. No, no, no. <laughs> this is not the first nah, one. Listen, uh, uh, jokes, aside, short, uh... Joke, joke, jokes aside, obviously, you guys know that I want you to buy the jersey, right? 10% <laughs> off, Technologia. <laughs> I'm saying technology so I can see how much our sales go up. But that aside, we really, really appreciate uh, you guys being along, along our journey. You guys are what makes, I mean, I think fans and spectators are what makes everything so special. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And without you guys, our job doesn't exist. Because the truth is, we don't build rocket ships. We don't build cars. We don't build houses. We don't build roads. We don't, we play video games for a living, right? So really, really appreciate you guys um, being there for us and supporting us. And not just, I mean, K fans are most of all, because you guys are the best, right? But I know there's a lot of other fans as well, uh, fans of mine, as well as fans of uh, fans from other organizations that say, hey, I'm a pain gaming fan, but you know, I, a secondary fan, I'm VKS. That stuff is cool too, okay? You're not as cool as the primary VKS guys, but you're pretty cool too, so I really appreciate that. Thank you very much. É isso, awesome. muito obrigado a todo mundo que acompanhou a gente em mais um episódio do MD3. A gente se vê quarta-feira, então, com rodada CBLOL com a Tabs, tá? A Tabinha vai estar com a gente na mesa aqui, então, fazendo também essa análise da rodada e comentando tudo o que aconteceu ao longo da semana. Muito obrigado, Joe. Muito obrigado a todo mundo. Thank you very much. See you. And see you next time. Bye-bye.